on to order the meeting of the Arlington Select Board for Monday, August 17th, 2020. As a preliminary matter, this is John Hurd, Select Board Chair. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Diane Mahan? Here. Joe Carroll? Here. Steve DeCourcy? Here. Lynn Diggins? Here. Staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Adam Chapdelaine? Yes. Douglas Heim? Here. And Board Administrator Ashley Marr is participating remotely. Good evening. This meeting of the Arlington Select Board is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020 due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth given the outbreak of the novel coronavirus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the virus and reduce risk of COVID-19 illness, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings and as such, the governor, governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of the public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order which you can find posted with the agenda materials for this meeting allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment even if members of the public do not provide comment, participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment, and those persons are not required to identify themselves. For this meeting, the select board is convening by Zoom, as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Please also take, please also take care to adjust your screen or device name if you would like to speak in order for us to recognize speakers appropriately and develop accurate minutes. It is helpful for participa participants to see your full name and your last name when calling upon you rather than a nickname. All of the meeting materials for this meeting, except any executive session materials, are available on Novus Agenda Dashboard. And we recommend the members and the public follow the agenda as posted on Novus unless the chair notes otherwise. We're now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comments, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly in a way that helps generate, generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in colloquy, with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. This meeting will feature opportunities for public comment on certain agenda items. For comments on items after me members have spoken, I as the chair will afford public comment opportunities as follows. I will ask members of the public who wish to speak to identify their names and addresses only. Once the chair has a list of public commentators, I will call on each by name and afford three minutes for any comments. Please keep in mind that all participants and all members of the public must be recognized by the chair before speaking. Finally, each vote in this meeting will be conducted by roll call votes. So that takes us to item number two, a proclamation for Ruth C. Balboni. Is Ruth with us, Mr. Town Manager? Or anyone representing Ruth? that wants to raise their hand. Yeah, I, I don't see Ruth's name, but yeah, if, like you just said, if someone could raise their hand. Uh, if So if someone is here on behalf of Ruth or if Ruth is here, if they can use the raise hand function on their Zoom application. Hey, there is one um, 
device that just has the device name, um, but I, I don't see I don't see Ruth's name. All right, so I'll go ahead and read the proclamation that we have here. Whereas Ruth Claire Balboni was born September 6, 1920 in Somerville, Massachusetts, and whereas Ruth attended Somerville High School and was, get, was active in high school athletics, playing three sports, basketball, tennis, and softball, upon graduation in 1938, Ruth went to work for Rustcraft Card Store, and whereas Ruth started working for the Raytheon Company in 1941, first on the production line, then later as a lab technician. In 1964, Ruth moved to Arlington and started a new job with Honeywell Inc. as a laboratory technician until her retirement in 1985. And whereas Ruth loved to travel. In addition to driving across the United States, she visited the countries of Morocco, Japan, Greece, Bermuda, in Grenada, as well as the European continent. And whereas Ruth is a lifelong Boston sports team fanatic and she enjoys socializing with her friends, playing Scrabble, crosswords, and maintaining her independence by walking to Arlington Center for shopping and errands. And now therefore be it resolved that we, the members of the select board proclaim September 6, 2020, Ruth C. Balboni Day in the town of Arlington in celebration of her 100th birthday. We are honored to wish her good health, happiness, and prosperity on behalf of past, present, and future residents of the town in celebration of her birthday. And the proclamation is signed by members of the select board. So we wish Ruth a happy birthday on September 6th, and I'll go down the line just for any comments from the board. Uh, Ms. Mahan? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, first, I want to move approval as well as um, say congratulations to Ms. Ruth C. Balboni for a uh, well-lived life that she's continuing on doing, uh, especially shopping and walking in Allen. So move approval. Thank you. Hopefully now it'll be a little easier for her to walk through Arlington Center with the new sidewalk. Mr. Diggins? I'll second that and I'll say, I think she might have beaten me on Wars with Friends uh, since she's a Scrabble <laughs> player. And and and, um, and also uh, she's a lab tech. I mean, I have a really soft spot in my, soft spot in my heart for lab techs because she was one for a long time. And I know I mean, that that's a, a very valued position. And, and, and if you have a good lab tech, you want to keep a good lab tech. And clearly, she must have been to be one for so long. And Mr. Carl? Say happy birthday to uh, Ms. Balboni. And, um, you know, I, I note that she was born uh, during the administration of President Woodrow Wilson and right in the aftermath of World War One and the Spanish flu uh, epidemic. So I, I'm sure that we could learn a lot um, from her. So uh, happy birthday. And Mr. DeCourcy. Hey, thank you, Mr. Chair. I also want to wish happy birthday to Ms. Balboni. I know since the Bruins, Celtics, and Red Sox are all playing tonight, and I, we know she's a sports team fanatic. I don't blame her for not being with us tonight. There's a lot to choose from. So happy birthday. She made a good choice. And we'll coordinate to get this proclamation to Ms. Balboni. All right. So we have a motion by Ms. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Diggins, town council. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Ms. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Carroll. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. The unanimous vote. And that takes us to our consent agenda for tonight. We have meeting minutes of meetings July 20th, 2020. We have a reappointment of our Poet Laureate of Arlington, Stephen Ratner, term to expire July 31st, 2021. We have a request for a contractor drain layer license from Jones Contracting, 735 Washington Street, Walpole, Massachusetts. 
We have approval of new election workers. We have John Doyle from 26 Bellevue Road, Precinct 10. Christina Hurley from 69 Orient Avenue, Precinct 19. Andrew O'Connell, 28 Randolph Street, Precinct 4. Shannon Robinson, 9 Afton Street, Precinct 12. And Andrew Ward, 11 Martin Street, Precinct 15. I will take a motion from Mr. DeCourcy. Yes, I move approval of all the items on the consent agenda. Thank you. And Mr. Carl, do you have a second? Second. And Ms. Mahan, any comments? No, thank you, Mr. Chair. And Mr. Diggins, any comments? Well, I just have one little comment for the um, Port Laureate, you know, and that is, um, Roses are red, violets are blue. For another year here, we now reappoint you. Thank you. <laughs> we have a future poet laureate for the town of Arlington. All right. So a motion to approve the consent agenda from Mr. Corsi, seconded by Mr. Curl. Attorney Hine. Ms. Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCorsi. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Carroll. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Unanimous vote. Thank you. And that takes us to appointment number seven on our agenda appointment to the Grants Committee of the Arlington Commission for Arts and Culture, formerly the Arlington Cultural Council. Emily Reynolds, term to expire June 30th, 2023. Is Ms. Reynolds with us? Hello. Hi, Ms. Reynolds. If you could just state your name and a little bit about yourself and why you decided to join the Commission for Arts and Culture. Sure. So my name is Emily Reynolds. I live on George Street in Arlington, um, and I'm, I'm a newish resident. I moved here moved here about a year ago, and so I'm interested partly, um, I'm interested in joining the, joining the committee partly because of that, I'm interested in getting to know my neighbors better and learning more about interesting things going on in town. Um, I'm also interested because of my professional background. So before moving to the Arlington area, the Boston area, I lived in Washington, DC. And uh, when I lived there, I was a senior program officer for a federal agency that makes grants to libraries and museums. So I sort of managed the whole grant making process from promoting the um, applications to working with applicants and making funding decisions and then working with grantees. Um, and I, I really loved that work and uh, I would be really excited to do it here on a more, more local level. Thank you. And George Street's right around the corner from me. So you already got to meet one of your neighbors by volunteering. Oh, great. <laughs> All right, so I will go to Mr. Carl. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I move approval of the uh, appointment, and I wanted to say uh, thank you very much for volunteering and for stepping in so so quickly after uh, you know moving to Arlington. Uh, your experience will certainly be um, uh, you know of great um, help uh, with the um, the committee. Um, as I say to have said to the last few uh, appointees to this this committee, you know the. Funding, as you probably know, is somewhat limited, but but there's a great track record of really leveraging it for uh, exciting projects, and we're going to be uh, needing those, particularly as we emerge from our uh, isolation. So, uh, thank you very much. Yep, Ms. Mahan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to second that and um, say welcome to you, Emily. I'm sort of near you, <laughs> but not as close as our chair. Um, and I, I'm really impressed with um, not only you stepping up and volunteering, but as you stated, all the experience that you bring in. I, I, one thing that really stood out to me was um, your work. Uh, I can't remember if it was ACAC or ICML. I can't remember the acronym. Um, but around the uh, community memory projects, um, I think especially now the times that we're in, I know I've seen um, other cities and towns um, that have started this and I think Arlington has a little bit. Um, so I just, not saying you have to do this, but I'd like to put a plug in, um, working with the committee and, and, and checking with uh, town manager, Mr. Chapelain and kind of coordinate that because uh, 
I think now would be a good time to, you know, have a community <laughs> memory experience uh, documented. So thank you so much for your willingness to do it. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Well, I have to say that's a great idea from um, my um, my colleague, um, Ms. Mahan. And I also um, want to uh, welcome you and, and appreciate uh, your offering to um, step up to this position. And I'm impressed with your your, um, your CV. I mean, um, definitely see the link between your CV and what you're doing. And, and the list of publications are very interesting, uh, too. So so thank you. And yeah, Mr. DeCorsi. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I also want to thank Ms. Reynolds for stepping up uh, to serve in this position. and, and uh, Echoing my colleagues, you have a very, a very impressive resume there and, and great experience, which I'm sure will help um, help out as we go forward. Thank you. Yep, and I just will echo the comments of my colleagues that thank you for willingness to serve. And this, you know, this has become such an important committee to the to the town of Arlington and really to the fabric of our society. So, all right. So, on a motion to approve by Mr. Carl. Seconded by Ms. Mahan. Attorney Heim. Ms. Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Carroll. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Unanimous vote. Thank you, Ms. Reynolds. Thank you. All right. And next, we have an appointment to the Parks and Recreation Commission for an associate member, Scott Lever. Term to expire June 30th, 2023. We have Scott with us. Yes. Can you hear me okay? Yes. And okay. Am I pronouncing your name correctly, Mr. Lever? <clears throat> yes, Lever. Yes, yep. that's right. Great. If you can just tell us a little bit about yourself and why you wanted to join the, the commission. Yeah, very happy to. So Scott Lever, uh, town meeting member, precinct eight, and um, interim chair, uh, co-chair, I should say, uh, in Vision Arlington, and also life lifelong, well, nearly lifelong member, uh, a resident of Arlington, grew up in East Arlington, and you know, I, I wanted to um, be able to have a positive impact on something that uh, is very meaningful to me and. The parks and the recreation programs have been something that I've enjoyed throughout my life and, and also are very meaningful to my children. And I live very close to Menominee Rocks Park and, and my family's a very frequent user of the park and, and other facilities across Arlington. So I wanted to, um, to be able to uh, make a connection between uh, our work at Envision Arlington and some of the other um, uh, activities across town and also uh, be able to impact something that is so important to my family, especially in this time of uh, social distance and, and uh, COVID. So, um, you know, this, this opening came up and, and I approached Adam uh, about participating and, and had an opportunity to meet one of the, the commission members and uh, the department leader. And, um, it, you know, it just seemed like a great opportunity for me to contribute and um, to do something that, that was very meaningful to my kids, so. That's about that, that's about the rationale. Thank you, and thank you for your willingness to serve. All right, Mr. DeCourcy. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'd like to move a, approval of the appointment of Mr. Lever to the uh, Park and Recreation Commission. Thank him for applying, and um, I think it's great. Your your children are involved in the uh, recreation and sports program, so it's nice to have a, a parent of a student so you're a little closer to. Um, some of the activities there. So thank you for um, for applying and um, the best of luck. Thank you. All right, Mr. Diggins. And I'd like to second that motion. And I would like to say to Scott, I, I was under the impression that you are not the interim chair of the Envision Arlington <laughs> Standing Committee. I thought that you know you were now the chair. So I hope um, I hope you're going to stay with the standing committee, you know, because I enjoy working with you there, you know, and, and uh, I'll echo Mr. DeCourcy's um, good luck because I went to one of those park and rec commission meetings, you know, maybe the last one. And, and I was, um, I was impressed with how long they are. You know? so, so, um, They're they, very they long. <laughs> they arrival at the select board meeting. So, uh, so, uh, so good luck. Have fun. <laughs> Thank you too. Uh, all right, Ms. Mahan.
Sorry, I had to unmute there. Um, so, college course is taking the set. I'm thrilled that you know, you know you're so close to the situation. Diane, we're losing you a little bit. How's that? Oh, good. I check my phone. <laughs> yep. Okay. Um, so, so I just wanted to thank um, Scott uh, for stepping up to the plate on this, and good luck with the Allington Res and Crusher Lot hearing. And Mr. Carl. Just to add my thanks. I think Mr. Doug, uh, Diggins just uh, put a little bit of a condition on your appointment that you stay on with uh, <laughs> Envision Arlington. Um, but uh, thank you. Um, uh, obviously, the, the the parks have been very important as kind of an outlet uh, for us right now for uh, some of our <clears throat> uh, fitness um, enterprises and and classes and uh, and uh, creative endeavors. So uh, um, more important than ever. So. Appreciate it. All right. So we have a motion for approval for, from Mr. DeCourcy, seconded by Mr. Diggins. Attorney Hein? Ms. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Carroll? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. And Ms. Pope? All right. Thank you, Mr. Lever. We look forward to working Thank with you. you. All right, and next we have an appointment. Catherine Levine. This meeting Einstein. is being recorded. Term to expire January 31st, 2023. Is Ms. Levine Einstein with us? I'm here. Maybe I just confirm, is it, am I saying this your name meeting correct? Is yep. being recorded. Perfect. Yep, Levine Einstein. Thank you. If you can just tell us a little bit about yourself and why you wanted to join the redevelopment board. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I live on Sutherland Road. I've lived in Arlington for four years with my family, um, and I've loved getting involved with the town um, and getting to know my neighbors. I was on the housing plan implementation committee for two years, um, and I'm really excited to get a chance to sort of continue to support the town and all of its housing goals. Um, this also is very much in line with my professional work. Um, I'm an associate professor of political science at Boston University and a faculty fellow at the Initiative on Cities there. I study um, housing, land use, and zoning, and I've written peer-reviewed books and articles about this. Um, and I'm especially interested um, in thinking about inclusive community processes. And I'm so excited to get to be a part of the town in this moment where I think we're all really interested in those goals. Um, and yeah, I'm just really excited to have a chance to support the town um, in you know, moving forward and making housing that's accessible to all of our residents. Hey, thank you. And thank you for your willingness to serve. All right, um, Mr. Carroll. Um, thank you very much. Um, I, I think I'd, I'll first, uh, move approval, but um, I'd, I'd like to just um, say something, you know, the, the redevelopment um, board is very distinctive um, entity here in Arlington. So it serves many purposes. It's a kind of a traditional planning board proposing and, and, and vetting um, zoning bylaw proposals for um, town meeting. It serves most of the aspects of a, of a redevelopment authority. It now serves as the board of survey as well. It also serves um, uh, as a landlord for a number of our properties here in town um, and, uh, and also contributes to a number of our um, policy initiatives um, too, or, um, um, around housing and around master planning and such. So um, I'm, you partially answered this, but I'm just wondering of, of that panoply of functions, where do you feel that your comparative advantage or advantages uh, lie? Um, so I guess, I, I think I'm really excited about all of them, first of all, but I guess within those areas, um, I'm especially um, interested in policy and sort of thinking about project approvals. Um, that's probably the area where most of my research has um, been focused, but I think all of those are areas where I feel comfortable serving and, um, and I'm excited to uh, participate and learn from my colleagues on the board. Thank you. I, I, your, your credentials are impressive and you uh, certainly must be a very busy person. So appreciate you devoting the time. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. DeCourcy. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll, I'll second Mr. Curro's motion and uh, thank Ms. Levine Einstein for um, applying to the Redevelopment Board. And you, you certainly do have a very impressive resume. I'm impressed with your work in the uh, Housing Politics Lab and the work you're doing with Professors Palmer and Glick. So um, thank you for stepping up and, and um, I appreciate your willingness to serve the town. Yeah, and Ms. Mahan? Also my thanks and I look forward to, um, I'll make sure I get your contact or give you a call sometime and chat. To give you along from my, my colleague's world. Um, I was just wondering, and if you're not aware, that's fine. So if you're not aware, this is sort of a, yeah. um, Arlington, there's a little bit of a conflict um, between various groups on uh, preserving the current B2 district um, for their use versus um, um, the projects for zoning in terms of um, primarily uh, primarily uh, residential. I'm just wondering about that. If you have thoughts on that, if you haven't yet, I'll check back in with you in a month or so. So I am definitely aware of some of this controversy um, and I definitely, you know, at hearings would want to listen to um, what all of my, you know, future board members, if I'm appointed and, um, you know, what my colleagues say and what people, you know, residents are saying. Um, I think my, my view in sort of thinking about these policies in general is that we as a community desperately need more housing and we need to provide it in a responsible way that respects um, our community and our residents and our businesses needs. Um, but that, that's sort of, I think that the housing need is really crushing right now in, in our community and in our region. Um, so yeah, thank you. All right, and Mr. Diggins. Hi, and um, thanks for, for um, stepping up and your willingness to take on this position. And I have to say, um, I've been reading this. It, uh, it's a really good book. I was hoping that I would have gotten through all of it by now. Uh, maybe I'm a little bit less than halfway through, but it's fascinating. It really is. It, uh, uh, you, you really confront me all of the big issues head on. And I, I, I really want to explore them in detail a lot and maybe do something with ACMI you know, and so I have a, a well, let me say one thing that really appealed to me, to, to me, um, oops, I lost the um, screen, but you can probably still see me, uh, was um, the, one of the things you proposed, I, mean, I think it was on page 164, was that it, uh, once you get a lot of comments, I mean, at a meeting, uh, instead of acting on them, uh, you should maybe wait a week or so um, before, um, acting on them, you kind of use the, the, the psychology of how the most recent input is the one that you weigh very heavily. And, uh, and also like uh, uh, you used the, the term p-hacking, I mean, uh, and, and uh, I like that notion of like looking for significance, just kind of probing and probing, doing all kinds of studies until you find something that kind of proves your point and then going, aha, this is why you should or should not do it. And now, also what I've, I've appreciated is, is the study about who inputs gives input in at meetings in and the democratic, the democratic process is is tough, it's it's a tricky one. I mean, and also one of the things you talk about in the book is how we sometimes getting more participation doesn't really get you the diversity of the presentation that you want. I mean, but you know, it's, uh, people. You have what you have. I mean, um, and the people who do show up, I mean, they they care. Uh, we may not agree with them, but they care. And and so I guess I want to have a sense of how it is, given your feelings about things, I mean, that people will feel that I mean, their input is weighed in a way that makes them feel that they really are a part of the process and not being dismissed. Thank you for that. And thank you so much for reading our book. First of all, it's amazing. Um, but no, it's a, it's a really important question, right? That I think everyone who cares about these projects should feel like their voice has been respected and heard. Um, and so to me, where I sort of think about how my research intersects with my work on the redevelopment board is um, that absolutely everyone, I want to hear everyone's views and I want to think about them seriously, but I want to contextualize those views. Um, but the people who show up to speak at those meetings, they're important and they deserve, the, it's part of our laws. Um, and I think it's important for them to be able to speak out. Um, 
but we also have to remember all of the other people who are affected by these decisions who we also represent in a town who maybe didn't have the time to show up because they didn't have the child care or they're working multiple jobs or they didn't know a meeting was happening in the first place. And so I think our job in government, it's really hard because we both need to listen to the folks in the room, but we also really need to think about our really important and valued constituents who are not in the room as well. So contextualizing those voices is also really important. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. And uh, and um, Mr. Chair, if um if I may, after we we vote, I mean, if I could have a question, time permitting, I mean, to them to Ms. Tom Einstein, question I appreciate for it. For Ms. Levine Einstein. Yes. Do you want to ask uh, me uh, now? No, it's a little tangential. So I mean, if we have the time, I mean, I like to do it. But 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 um, so. I would ask it now. <laughs> I don't okay. want to just. Fine. You're the chair. I'll oh, do it now. I'll do it now. So uh, as I said, it's tangential. I mean, the, the only link to it is house. Uh, it's the word house. I mean, uh, and so as you know, the Federal Reserve I mean, had to study back from 10, 2015 about I mean, the net worth. I mean, uh, I mean, white households is nearly $250,000. And for black households, it's eight. I mean, uh, I've been thinking about it a lot, I mean, in terms of how to uh, protect, perhaps solve it. I mean, it's a little bit of algebra. I mean, but I'm wondering, what, what potential solutions do you see to that? I mean, uh, yeah, so you know, obviously I, I won't take us too far afield, but where it really links to housing is housing is such an important contributor to our net worth. And so I think having accessible housing, um, accessible opportunities for home ownership for all people um, is really important um, and as it relates to this board. Uh, providing diverse housing stock in a community um, so that people at different income points and wealth points can access housing markets in high opportunity communities. I think it's a really important equity goal. So yeah, so it's a really important report. Thank you for raising it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank yep, you, Ms. Einstein. All right. And I just, again, like to thank you for your willingness to serve. This is such an important board in town. And the next year and years coming, we, we as a SUC board are going to be working very closely with Redevelopment Board to identify any, what, if any, zoning changes need to be made to our zoning laws. And so we look forward to working with you closely on this. We always mention when we do appointments how we're impressed, so impressed by the quality of candidates that we have that volunteer in Arlington. And let's say your resume is just about up there, if not on the top, with the top candidates we see. So you're certainly qualified for this position. All right, so we have a motion for approval from Mr. Caro and seconded by Mr. DeCourcy, Attorney Hein. Ms. Mahon. Ms. Mahan? Yes. Going in out. Yes. Uh, Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Curo? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Unanimous vote. All right. Thank you, Ms. Levine. <coughs> Thank right. you. Next on our agenda, we have licenses and permits. We have four approval, a food vendor license for Abbott's Frozen Custard, 71 Park Avenue in Denoncourt. Is Jason with us? Yes, I'm here. Hi, Mr. Denoncourt. I, I get to say this for just about most of the food vendor licenses, but I'm very excited about this one. I love <laughs> Abbott's across my office. Now I have it near my house. So. Nice. Pending approval. If you want to just tell us a little bit about your application. Uh, sure. So originally this started off as just a way to try to, um, you know, serve the Arlington Heights neighborhood. And we started looking around in January and February. Um, we were trying to identify a place just to put our cart, um, but then um, started talking to Ali Carter about some of the vacancies in Arlington Heights. And we just um, considered like a pop-up seasonal location. Um, so we found 71 Park Ave, which is about 300 square feet. It's um, right next to the frame uh, framing company there, as well as um, Century 21. And it's um, across from the old Brigham's. And so I've been working with a landlord literally since January, February, but obviously things got delayed um, with all that's going on in the world. And so here we are. Um, end of the summer trying to move forward with this and um, see if it's 
can become more of a permanent location instead of a um, instead of just a seasonal pop-up location. Um, so that's generally the gist of what we're trying to do here. It's going to be more of like a walk-up walk-up window. It's not going to be a full-service um, location, but we will have most um, most products available. We'll make all the products in our Arlington Center location, and then just um, sell them from this location. And Ms. Mahan. Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, based on uh, what Mr. Denoncourt and the esteemed chairs high praise, I'd like to move approval. Thank you. And Mr. DeCourcy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I'll second uh, Ms. Mahan's motion. Uh, just a question for Mr. Denoncourt. Right mm -hmm. now, you, you, from the application, your lease, your tenant will through September 20th. Is that still the end date or, or hopefully we, we have warmer weather and you maybe can go through October or even into November. But I just wanted to ask you about that on the seasonal nature of it. Yeah, I think that, you know, I think I wrote this application at a time when um, it was unclear. I mean, the lease terms were unclear, but it's gonna be at least a three year commitment. So, um, you know, the seasonality, the seasonal experimentation is kind of behind us now. So I'm just going to kind of move forward with it. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Best of luck. Thank you. Mr. Carl. Well, I want to just thank you very much for uh, making this investment, uh, especially up, up in the Heights. You know, this is, um, we've been hearing a lot of tough tough stories uh, the last last few months so it's it's uh, wonderful to see um, someone opening a new a new location um, and especially up in, up in the um, in the heights which I know has been looking for some variety there um, I was thrilled when you came to the center because I didn't have to go to Lexington anymore and I'm even happier now that uh, I have a choice so <laughs> good year thank you and mr. Diggins Yes, thanks a lot. And I'm just kind of curious. I mean, uh, I was looking around, looking around on the website. How many locations do you have nationwide? There's uh, 39 locations. Okay, I only saw five on the site, and so I thought that was a little low. So, all right, cool. No, no, great. And and um, I think there's five and, in five in Massachusetts. Okay, got. You. Yeah. Actually, I, I muted myself. Thank you. You know, I think um, New Englanders are kind of hardcore when it comes to here. Your frozen treats. We'll be eating them year round, especially in the heights. So thanks. <laughs> Good to hear. <laughs> All right. And again, thank you for your willingness to stay in business in Arlington and expand. All right. So we have a motion for approval by Mr. Mahan, second by Mr. DeCourcy. Attorney Hahn. Ms. Mahan. I'll come back to her. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Ms. Mahan. Uh, Ms. Mahan uh, has, seems to have lost audio. I think we have her back. Ms. Mahan, can you hear me? No, I, on her, I'm, I can look at her connection and she doesn't have the audio connection right now. Can the record reflect, Mr. Chair, that at 7.54 PM approximately, lost the audio of uh, select board member Diane Mahan. Yes, so reflected. Um, I'll finish taking the roll call vote for now and we'll, while we try to restore Ms. Mahan's audio. Yep. Um, Mr. Kiro. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. So at present, Mr. Chairman, it's a 4-0 vote. Um, I don't know if you'd like to proceed or you'd like to try to get Ms. Mahan's vote before we move on um just want to confirm did did we just lose her again yep it looks like it's 755 we lost uh the video and if at a, at a four oh, we're connecting to audio now try diane all right we can proceed with this one with a 4-0 vote I'm getting a nod of approval by Ms. Mahan. So we'll put this in the record as a 4-0 vote that reflecting that Diane lost audio for a brief period. 
No, we're... That's all we need, Attorney Heim? That's right. All right. And so that takes us to our newly minted open forum. I apologize. I didn't get a chance to change the name of the meeting of the open forum when the agenda was first uh, posted. But if you look now, it says open forum. Except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. So, Mr. Chapdelaine, if you can let me know who we have signed up. Right, so we have one hand raised right now. Uh, the name is Jordan Weinstein. All right, and we'll give another few seconds. If anybody would like to speak in the open forum, please use the raise hand function on your device. Would you like me to promote Jordan to panelists so he can speak now? Yes, please do. All right, Mr. Weinstein, are you with us? I'm with you. <laughs> All right, if you could just state your name and address for the record. Yeah, uh, Jordan Weinstein, uh, 23 Lennon Road, Precinct 21 mm -hmm. in Arlington. Um, I just wanted to uh, uh, thank the select board uh, in the upcoming letter that it's going to be voting on uh, to send to uh, uh, to send to uh, the executive director of mass housing uh, in regards to the Myrac uh, development um, that it has taken note of the concerns about the loss of uh, commercial space currently used by artists uh, and one uh, commercial tenant, uh, and that it also it agrees that these are um, important for Arlington to keep and uh, to uh, try not to lose them as a result of the development. Um, so it's much appreciated that the select board has done that. And also uh, in regards to the um, upcoming discussion about the uh, the timing uh, and the way to perhaps conduct the uh, special town meeting. Uh, I'd also like to uh, extend an appreciation that the select board is considering uh, the use of a virtual and uh, a way to do that online to allow it to happen and to give us time to actually discuss things in, in depth without um, uh, necessarily, uh, you know, uh, endangering anybody's health. So thank you very much for, that, for those two things. Thank you. And Mr. Town Manager, do we have any additional hands raised? You know. And Ms. Mahan, is your audio restored? Or are you here? So I um I can see and we, we and one a hand was just raised. Um I can see Ms. Mahan's phone number as an attendee. Um and I've I've allowed it to speak, uh, but it seems like it's muted. Is it, is it muted on your phone, Diane? No. Mr. Manager, uh, can we try, uh, what is it, the star? Um, star six. Star six, yeah, I believe, to unmute. Okay, now you can hear me? Yeah, we got you. Uh, thank you. I'm sorry, the call just failed. I'll try not to make that happen again. Okay. And Mr. Chaplin, who is the person that raised the hands? Patty Muldoon. Okay. And are there any additional hands raised at this time? There are not. All right, so we will turn to Ms. Muldoon and that will put a closed decision to open forum. All right, Ms. Muldoon. I just wanted to second what uh, what was just said by Mr. Right. Weinstein. Ms. Muldoon, that... if you can just state your name and address just for the record. 
Thank you. I'm Patricia Muldoon, 67 Smith Street. Anyway, I just wanted to say thank you for considering um, moving our town meeting online. I, I will feel much safer if, if we can pull off that feat. Thanks, that's all. Thank you. All right, and that will put a close to open forum. And that brings us now to traffic rules and order. Number 11 on our agenda for approval, removal of one elm tree, one sugar maple, one crab apple, two Norway maple trees at the old burying ground is um, Mr. Chaplain, is Mr. Feeney going to present this or did you want to? You're muted. Uh, Jim's here and he should be coming up on screen. Good evening, members of the board. Thanks, Jim. If you can just tell us a little bit about the request. Sure. So this request is before you this evening due to the uh, previously funded CPA project to restore the perimeter wall at the old burying ground. Uh, the time has come to begin construction on uh, repairing the entire perimeter of the wall at the site. Uh, and in doing so, we're going to have to remove some uh, volunteer trees that have sprung up uh, over the years and were not removed, but are currently now either damaging the wall or structures integral to the cemetery. Uh, so they are either that or they are sort of interfering with uh, access to the wall or the structures that need to be repaired. So. Uh, in the planning phase for this project, we did hire uh, a conservation and preservation arborist uh, via Tree Specialists Incorporated, and we had them conduct multiple site visits with our own tree warden. And while there were a, a few other uh, mature, healthy trees identified for possible removal, uh, we reviewed them more closely once we uh, awarded the contract to uh, a masonry contractor. Uh, and learned from him exactly what uh, trees were truly in the way and those which we could work around. So this is the most conservative request possible that we're able to bring before the board. Uh, there are two other trees that are larger and healthier that are not currently impacting any structures, though they're not in great locations, that we decided it would be best to monitor sort of the rate and direction of their spread over the years to come, but uh, didn't feel it was necessary to remove them from the canopy just yet. So in addition to the uh, five trees uh, we're seeking approval to remove that you noted, Mr. Chair, uh, within our scope of work, we're also seeking to perform maintenance on uh, all of the remaining trees uh, within the grounds so that we can sort of reinvigorate the, the core canopy that will remain. So we will be doing uh, a lot of maintenance pruning, uh, sort of crown reduction, end weight reduction, a lot of strategies that will help prevent uh, a lot of the dead wood that falls after every uh, windstorm and uh, damages headstones. Uh, we'll also do some uh, girdling root maintenance. So, uh, you know, while we do hope to perform outright removals on some of these scrub type invasive trees. We are also uh, planning to perform pretty intensive maintenance on the trees to remain and are also committed to uh, replanting at least five trees. Uh, we've worked with the tree warden again to identify appropriate sites for trees within the grounds that we don't believe uh, would impact any of the structures that are there and you know are likely going to replenish losses that have been experienced over time. Yeah. So that is sort of the, the basics. Thank you. And I will note that we have a letter of support posted in the agenda from the Community Preservation Act Committee, as well as received today over the weekend. There was a vote by the Arlington Historical Committee to support the tree removal as well. All right. 
the Arlington Historical Society. Sorry. All right, so I'll turn to members of the board for question, comments, or a motion. Mr. Diggins? Um, I motion to approve the tree removal as suggested or as um, denoted um, in the letter. All right, and Mr. Crow? I'll second the motion. I'll also note that we also received a piece of correspondence in support of this by, from the uh, Cemetery Commission. Thank you. And Ms. Mahan? No comment, thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Corsi? Uh, no comment. All right, so we have a motion for approval from Ms. Diggin, second by Mr. Carl, attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd, if Hurt. I may. Hurt. I was good. Uh, I, normally, the, the board would treat this as a hearing allowing public comment, and there is one raised hand if you're okay with it. I will open this to public comment. And we have we have one raised hand, Keith Schnebley. Okay. So we can promote Mr. Schnebley. Mr. Schnebley, are you with us? I think he's here. Um... How's that? Can you hear me now? I can. Okay, sorry about that. So um, my name is Keith Schnabley. I live on Web Cowett Road. I'm a member of the tree committee. Um, I just wanted to note that um, Mr. Feeney did send us all this information last week before we had our tree committee meeting. Um, and it feels like it's good to be informed. I think that it's also important that we are planting as well as pruning and taking down trees. Uh, so I want to just ask a question about the tree hearing process and when it's appropriate and when it's not. Um, but before you answer that, I do I do want to say that we've had a couple of instances in the last few months where either the Department of Public Works or, or the Facilities Department has come to the tree committee. And I think it's a good precedent for them to come to us and talk to us about the um, process so that we understand um, what's being done. Uh, and in this case, it was just done by letter, but I really like the idea that they come and talk to the tree committee meetings before um, proceeding to um, implementing the plan. Okay, great. So I guess I'm speaking in favor. Um, I think it's a good plan. I, I am sort of curious when and when we don't have tree hearings and what the impact of those, those are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I could give a brief synopsis uh, in answering that question. So uh, in, in general, from a statutory point of view, and, and Attorney Hine could certainly clarify if I get this wrong, but uh, tree hearings are statutorily required for trees that abut the public way. Uh, so the, so ba basically street trees are what require public hearings or public shade trees would be what requires a tree hearing. Several years ago, uh, in cooperation with the tree committee, we committed to holding tree hearings for trees that wouldn't be statutorily required um, as public shade trees, but to make sure there was public process around the removal of these trees, we committed to holding hearings. Some of this stemmed from the upset uh, that followed the removal of a tree as part of the Magnolia Park renovation that uh, most of us probably recall. Um, so we've been going through that process in, we came to you with a request for removal for the Lake Street bikeway crossing, as well as one tree as part of the uh, Arlington Center sidewalk project. And now this project at the request of the tree warden, who um, felt like based on the realities of this virtual world that we're existing in, and uh, I, I guess I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I, I also believe somewhat of his feeling that these had been appropriately vetted and could be brought directly to the board from a streamlining point of view. Uh, that's why these past two have occurred in this manner. Um, I, I think it it's probably a good time for myself and the director of public works and tree warden and anybody else appropriate probably to come back to a tree committee meeting and assess the pro you know how things have gone in the process how, how it's gone over the past several years and see if we want to continue as we had been if we want to put different requirements or structures in place um, I mean I think it's good to have some 
form of public pr process around the removal of trees, whether that's required statutorily or not. Um, but I think honing in on the right way to do it would be a good future discussion for us to have. Yeah, I think that would be great. Uh, I and you know, when uh, Mike uh, came around the Lake Street and the, and the Mass Ave, uh, that was a really good process, right? He brought us the you know, what would they were doing, why these trees needed to be removed, what was the purpose, and, and also a planting plan. Um, and I guess I really like that process. So I think it would be great if we could get you to come to one of our meetings in the future. Um, and I think the only other thing I want to ask is just, you know, we plant trees, but um, they have a good chance of survival if we take care of them and water them <laughs> through the heat. Um, so I'm, I'm just curious if there's a care plan for the trees that we plant in the old burying ground. Sure. So obviously the new the new trees that we that we plant as a town, obviously we establish our own watering plan. And if we uh, plant them via a contractor, uh, they would come with a warranty period here because there's no uh, irrigation in the grounds. We would do so with the gator style watering bags. Uh, the, the one thing I will add that the conditions in the old burying ground for uh, growing trees have proved really quite favorable, you know, much more park-like conditions as opposed to the struggles we have with uh, street trees around town and the, the conditions that they're forced to grow in. So I do feel better about planting new trees in uh, this type of use. Thanks Attorney, I, I just want to jump to you for a second. Did you have any comments on the previous topic that we went through? Yeah, th thank you, Mr. Hurd. I just wanted to highlight uh, for uh, Keith and for uh, folks who are interested in watching that the law, what the law requires under Chapter 87, Sections 3 and 4, are for the tree warden to have a hearing before uh, cutting down any public shade trees. Uh, the select board, in theory, only needs to be involved if there's a written objection or any objection really expressed to the tree warden about. Uh, cutting down a tree. Uh, generally, we've had, as Mr. Chapterlain is suggesting, a more involved process. It's not necessarily required by law. I also just want to note for the public's information that there are certain conditions that are exceptions, such as, you know, trees that might be growing in a way to, you know, uh, inhibit uh, views uh, for, you know, public ways in a way that would be dangerous or something like that. Thank you. Mr. Schnevely, do you have any additional comments? No, thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Chaplin, are there any other raised hands? There are not. All right. Pen just broke. All right. So we have a motion by Mr. Diggins, seconded by Mr. Carl. Attorney Heim. Ms. Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Curo. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Unanimous vote. Thank you. All right, that brings us to item number 12, discussion and approval, proposed locations for blue bike stations. We have Jenny Raid, our Director of Planning and Community Development, and Daniel Amsett, our Senior Transportation Planner. So Ms. Rate is at the ARB meeting tonight, but we do have Dan here on both this and the next agenda item. Yep, thank you. Hi, thank you very much, members of the board. Um, I'm gonna share my screen with a little the presentation that I believe, oops, I'm not able to share. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, with the uh, brief presentation I have about these station locations. Um, so this is a follow-up from the uh, discussion that was at the last select board meeting on July 20th that referred to the select or the blue bikes contract um, and sort of the discussion around that. And so very shortly after that meeting, we sent out a poll or had a survey available for the public to look at some station locations that we had been looking at for a little while and the different networks that were possible. And so I'm going to go a little bit through that and how those were um, how those were conceived and some of the guidelines around how we um, 
decided to site these stations in, in certain locations or how we would, we would like to site them in certain locations. So we can place up to six stations in the town as part of this initial rollout or expansion of the Blue Bikes program into Arlington. Uh, I'll go through each of these, these in detail. There are at least four that we would like to get approval for. The other two, it says to be approved at a later date, but if, um, if the board wishes to uh, sort of give, a, give an approval pending looking at a, um, there, there are some locations that we, we need to look at because of um, some additional conditions that may be in, in place there, or there's one on the bikeway that we're required M MBTA approval. Um, we need to look at them a little bit further, but um, I would also like to add that um, Troy McHenry, um, I believe, should be in the audience. He is um, representative from Blue Bikes in case there are any specific questions for Blue Bikes um, closer or during the presentation or at the end of the presentation. Um, the bike share, so the station, we had a number of guidelines that we needed to follow as we looked at where to place the stations. And I think we all generally know what they look like. They're, um, they can be, uh, have a number of docks, they're sort of modifiable. In this case, we'd have about, uh, I believe, 11 docks and six or seven bikes per station. And so they're 32 feet long and six feet wide. Um, the, the station density of being no more than about a third of a mile from at least one other station plays into this because of when we had our survey of locations, there was quite a lot of concern from residents about not having any stations in Arlington Heights. But unfortunately, just the way that the, the density needs to be and the fact that the existing stations are in Cambridge and Somerville on the east side of town uh, and the number of stations we have available to us um, it just doesn't make it possible to get very far towards the heights. But we've tried to get them as far as we can to the west. Um, they can impede access to utilities. They have to be placed on firm level hardscape. Uh, they do need sunlights as they are powered through solar panels. Um, the near, no near-term construction projects. This was a factor, especially for the um, location we were looking at at Town Hall, um, would be affected by the plaza construction at Town Hall that's going to be happening soon. And then um, there is a consideration that we can think about later about which stations might be able to stay out during the winter. The program is year round. And generally, if any communities have stations on sidewalks, they can stay out year round and blue bikes will shovel them out. But if they're on the street, we usually they usually have them picked up or the communities have them picked up so they don't get hit by plows and so on. So we did a, a, a community poll conducted between July 23rd and July 31st, and the breakdown of the network locations that we were looking at was in the memo, but the three common stations between all of these were um, Mass Ave at Whittemore Street or, or Broadway, that general area, the uh, one at Capitol Square, and then one at Thorndike Field at, at uh, the bikeway, which would be very uh, close to Alewife. When it came to the polling, um, we had a bit more um, more support for the option two, which I'll get to the map again in just a moment. Um, option three, it's sort of the so it was between option two and option one, and we tried to sort of hybridize them a little bit. Um, and then 10% of people said they didn't agree with any option, and most of the people that chose that option said that because they there weren't any uh, proposed locations in Arlington Heights or they didn't agree with the program or something along those lines. They didn't want to lose any on-street parking. So this, this particular map received the highest number of public votes. When we actually went down, I, I did a, a morning where I went with the general manager of the Blue Bikes at, to cite these locations more precisely. Where should they actually go on the street or on the sidewalk? And so we had to move some things around. Um, when adjusting certain station locations, what moved, the ones that moved considerably are Mass Ave at Swan Place or the bikeway at Swan Place. We had a very hard time finding a spot that was safe from you know a traffic safety point of view, had enough just geometric space for a station of that size. We had a, a location next to the bikeway that would have worked, but um, there were some concerns about freight delivery for the businesses there, um, the 
very narrowness of the street that it would make. And so we looked around for a different location and, and came upon the railroad, the railroad lot at Man Man Bikeway, and I'll have that later on. And the same thing uh, with Capitol Square, we had difficulty finding a location, um, just be, again, being aware of the uh, on-street parking and uh, demand for on-street parking there. We decided we, we had an option on Winter Street, but we decided to move that away further um, to a location that we think that we knew had um, less parking demand. So those two moved more considerably than um, any of the others. So here are the specific station locations. Um, and this one, um, again, we, we had originally had an idea. One of the options, option one, had a town hall at the bikeway option. But the, um, there's going to be some work done at the town hall plaza right in front of town hall um, on Mass Ave. And that's where we would have found a very nice location right on the sidewalk, which would have worked. But um, because that is upcoming in the next couple of months, um, that simply wouldn't, wouldn't work when uh, we would have had to pick it up again. So we looked around, we looked around a little bit. And so again, keeping the the stations, when we looked at the sort of creating this network, we tried to create, uh, have stations that were near the commercial areas. So there'd be lots of um, activity of people, whether they're tourists or going to um, businesses. The, you know, the idea is to have a lot of turnover with the bikes. And so we wanted to keep them near the commercial areas and, and near the bikeway. The bikeway was very, very popular. When we looked at the line bike data, that was, I think, the most popular corridor for people using the line bikes. Um, this one would be just behind uh, the sort of near the um, Uncle Sam statue and the railroad lot. It would require the removal of a couple of parking spaces at the edge of the railroad lot to make this work. Um, I think the and and for some of these, the bikes could face um, the bikes would probably face the sidewalk so that you could take the bikes out and just get it right onto the sidewalk and wouldn't need to go out too much into the street to, to do that. Um, so uh, that's that option and I can continue, I don't know if there are any questions or if I can, I should just continue on through them. You can just roll through them and then okay. we can take questions at the end. Okay. Um, this one again, most of these locations, because we don't have very many areas that have a sufficient sidewalk space, even in parts of East Arlington, there's the sidewalk and then there's sort of the furnishing zone where you have, where you have trees and you have um, benches and utility poles and that kind of thing. It makes it difficult to site because we would need at least 10 or 11 or 12 feet of clear sidewalk in order to really make this work. Um, and so this one, this is sort of the mass of at Whittemore but moved over towards Broadway. So it can be very close to Broadway Plaza without being on Broadway Plaza in some of these parking spaces that are near the uh, on Mass Ave, but um, just anecdotally don't seem quite as utilized as some of the other ones that are directly in the plaza, like right on Broadway. And these would face, again, these would face the sidewalk so they wouldn't actually have to go out into the street to uh, either drop the bicycle or pick up the bicycle. Um, so traffic safety was certainly one of the concerns when it came to siting these. And um, it's possible to you know orient to the stations in such a way so that you take it away from the street. Um, this one, so this is the one that was we had originally looked at Capitol Square. We looked at a spot on Winter Street just off of Mass Ave that was a no parking area, but we had some traffic safety concerns. Um, I should add that we passed all of this by the police department and also the public works department to get their opinions and they did have concerns about that particular location. And so understanding, uh, you know, trying to sort of balance between taking some parking spaces for the bike share stations, but trying not to take the most in demand ones, we were aware that these, these angled spaces over by Grafton Street were not as utilized as some of the ones directly in Capitol Square. Um, and so these, this, this is something where um, this is showing sort of taking up four parking spaces, um, but we believe we could orient this so that it could only, uh, only three of them would need to be taken out. An alternative might be across the street or the parallel spaces, 
Um, but ideally, because this is further away from the travel area, from the driving area, this would be preferred from the blue bike's point of view. Um, this one is across on Broadway, across from the East Cambridge Savings Bank. So this is close, very close to North Union. Um, this one is again right on the street. Uh, there is a. Uh, the only concern here is that there's a tree, um, but it, I believe it's an ash tree, and so it wouldn't sort of drop any sap or nuts or that kind of thing onto the bike share station. Um, and since it's only one tree, it shouldn't be too affected by uh, you know lack of sunlight. Um, it's also possible this could be across the street, but since um, it'd be about, again, another two parking spaces, since the parallel parking space is about 20 feet wide or 20 feet long, um, we'd have to affect at least two of them in order to make this work. Um, and then there are a few, these other two are ones that, as I said in the beginning, are uh, need a little bit further review. This one, this one is the closest one to Alewife on the Minuteman bikeway. Um, there is a there is this path that goes just off of the bikeway. You can see the line of the Minuteman bikeway and the yellow center lines there. And so this is a path that's just off uh, the bikeway um, that would work very well. I think we again we don't need to put down any additional hardscape here. Uh, the issue is that because this is property maintained or owned by the MBTA, we would need to get their approval in order to make this happen. Um, we need to speak to the real estate division. There is another possible option that's there is some property that the town owns uh, kind of in between the bikeway and Magnolia Field that we would need, we'd still need to scope out and do a field review. Um, but that might be sort of a way around needing to get MBTA approval. Uh, we're not sure exactly how long that would take, but uh, Blue Bikes is, is also looking into that as well. And then the last one I have, Linwood Street at the Minuteman Bikeway. Um, there was some concern from the police and public works about sort of narrowing the street to about 18 feet here. Um, and I guess there, there's also some on-street parking activity that happens due to the, the park and also to the field that's right next to here. Another option uh, in order to make this work would be to put a concrete pad um, sort of behind the sidewalk. Uh, there are some trees there that we would need to uh, look at avoiding, um, but it would need to be a very it would need to be fairly large because we're looking at a, at least a 32 foot by six foot space that would need to be created by this. Um, but again, this was um, this was one of the options, or this was the option two. This was the location that was um, one of the most popular, uh, one of the most popular options. So this is one that we'd still we'd like to work on a little bit more before we can um, sort of go move ahead with it. Um, and so that is my presentation. I'm happy to take any questions about the um, about any of these locations. Um, I believe that I believe that in terms of the number of parking spaces, it would probably be around ten or eleven. I can count them up to be exactly that would be removed through through this um, these on street stations in particular. Um, but uh, again, Troy, I believe Troy here is also. If there are any blue bike specific questions. All right, and Mr. Chaplin, if you wanted to promote Troy, if he's available. Yep, I did. I did do that. Okay. Thank you. All right, Ms. Mahan. Um, I want to thank um everybody for all the hard work that's gone into this. Um, and we'll continue. Um, so I'd like to make a motion to approve um the bike stations at Railroad Lot at Minuteman Bikeway, at Mass Ave at Broadway, at Mass Ave. <laughs> Abbott Grafton Street and at Broadway at Grafton Street. Thank you. And Mr. DeCorsi. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll, I'll second the motion. I do have a couple of questions. Um, first, I want to thank Mr. Amstutz for the comprehensive presentation. Um, a couple of questions just on the third of a mile difference. I know it's possible to spread it out more with Motivate or, or Blue Bike Trees. And I am a little concerned about everything being, I guess now one dock um, to the west of Plus Street being in the rear lot. But wondering, as you look at this, if, if 
there's any way of, of considering going beyond the one third of a mile, um, even on a pilot basis to see if there's enough interest because it just seems we're, we're, we're locked in on the Cambridge border in terms of where our first um, dock is going to go. And it just, with only stations, it doesn't get you that far. So I'm just curious if there, you know, the communities, if, if exceptions can be made to try to spread it out a little bit. I will, I'll first say, and then I'll think I'll probably pass it to Troy, but um, some, of, with some of these distances are, uh, a little bit further, as it as it turns out, when I when I looked at this again and uh, sent it to uh, Dominic Trebone, who was at the last meeting, uh, the one at Thorndike Field and the bikeway is probably more like a, a fourth to or uh, half a mile to the one at um, Grafton and Mass Ave. It's it's a bit farther than you know typically or what we would be looking for. Um, but something that they also look at is sort of these sister stations to make sure that there's at least one that's nearby. Uh, this is partly due for rebalancing and partly so that if somebody has a bike and they try to bring it to a dock and that dock is full, that they can bring it to one that's nearby and they could walk back to it in about five minutes or so, five to seven minutes. Um, but there are, I guess there are a number of sort of um, operational reasons why keeping the densities tight like this are as they are, um, and I'll let Troy talk to that. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, thank you for having me. <laughs> um, yeah, I, Daniel, that was very well said. I think there are a lot of operational considerations, um, namely the, the fact that the stations aren't that large, they're only um, uh, 11 dock stations. So having sister stations does in fact help uh, rideability and allow people to dock when stations are full. Um, and also gives a lot of continuity to the system, right? So then you're now uh, working in, in congruence with the other municipalities that are involved in blue bikes. And I think it helps, uh, again, the general rideability and user experience. Um, when you start talking about spreading stations out, it does add a, a level of complexity for, for uh, rebalancing uh, to Daniel's point. And it also, it's, it's, it's just problematic uh, in its entirety because now things are in isolation and most of blue bikes are, are round trip or excuse me are, are not round trips so for the fact uh, of people taking trips from point a to point b rarely do they actually like return back to the original station right so again having that that uh, density is is very important okay no thank you I, and, and I, I appreciate that i I think as we look at the map, and, and I think it's a great program, but as we look at the map, half the town doesn't have a docking station. And, and so uh, it would be great to, to have other stations as you go up the, the, the bikeway. And I don't know if that's a function, if, if this is very successful in Arlington, maybe there can be an amendment to add more stations or docking stations if, if there's demand for it and the public is, is, is responsive to that. Um, but it just, puts us in a, a situation where you look at the map and it, it, it just feels limiting to, to a lot of people that may be interested. Mr. DeCourse, I think that's a really great point. And, and I'll, I'll just add quickly that uh, just starting out only with six stations, I think, again, it's important to have that continuity with the rest of the system. So to your point, I think um, in terms of expansion, then I think that's where you start seeing the infill. And it can be a slow process, right? It could be a potentially a station or two added um, over the course of a few years, right? So where you're uh, you're infilling um, and getting much more density throughout the, the entire town. Okay. Yep. Mr. Chaplain, did you have a comment, Ted? Yeah, I, you know, I just wanted to add, and, and certainly Troy can correct me if I'm wrong, but um, I, I think, you know, the perspective I'm trying to have is I don't believe, uh, you know, Boston's obviously much larger than us, but Boston didn't have border to border coverage or Cambridge or Somerville. And I, I think Brookline started with maybe even only one or two stations. So I, I, I think it, it does feel like the type of thing that can grow from success. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I would love to see it on the other side of town too, but I, I think if we can, if we can demonstrate success and grow from there, we might, we, we I think that would put us in position to follow how the network has grown in other communities. Absolutely. Well said. All right, Mr. Ansis. Yeah, and, and just one other thing I'll mention is that um, when we were pursuing grant funding for 
this project and for Blue Bike Stations, we actually applied for a secondary grant um, called Community Connections through the Metropolitan Planning Organization. And we actually received the same amount of funding, about $80,000 through that program, but the uh, funding is not available until I believe 2021 or 2022. So if the program proves successful over the next couple of years, we may actually have another funding source to, or another grant funding source that we could draw from um, in order to expand, you know, add several more stations uh, that way. So um, it, we haven't talked about that very much, but that is in the future, uh, at least a year away or two years away. Um, so we, we do have that around. All right. All right, Mr. Diggins. Well, that was an interesting statement there, Mr. Amstutz, because that makes me think that what I would like to do is kind of align things so that we can be get out to the heights. So I would like be just kind of string everything along Mass Ave so that if we do get that grant or if the funds are released in 21, 22, we would stand a better chance of getting out to the heights because I do share Mr. Corsi's concerns. Um, about uh, not getting this system out to the heights because I actually think the heights would benefit from it more. Uh, um, I think environmentally uh, and even for, for buses, it would be better if we could get people from the heights on bike to, let's say, in, um, the T or, or very close to the T in, in, the, in, in the east where I am. You know, it's fairly easy for us to walk to the T. Uh, and so, so that's um, a comment there based on your last comment. Uh, but along, along those lines, I mean, I, I am, I'm wondering what is the rationale for the, the um, stations on the station on um, Broadway? Uh, I mean, you can look at it. You can look at it a couple different ways, right? Or this sort of, if you look at transit, you, you look at um, coverage versus frequency. And so looking at this, was trying to find a way to get coverage of more of East Arlington so that it was around the commercial areas, the commercial corridors, Mass Ave, of course, and Broadway, but also the bikeway. Um, I also looked at it from the perspective of that side of town is uh, more low income than other parts of town. And so trying to look at it from an equity lens as well to make sure that there's some on Broadway, uh, you know, so near to the Somerville line. Gotcha. Does um, what does Lyme data say about that area? Do we have any Lyme data from from usage in that area? I think there was a fair amount of usage on Broadway. I don't okay. have it uh, on the tip of some of my fingers, That's but fine. Um, That's fine. Yeah. But your recollection is that there is such maybe there was some usage in that area. My last question yeah. um, is about the station around. Um, uh, the one that's close to the town hall. I mean, did you consider maybe putting um, a station on the street, I mean, uh, across from town hall, by that crosswalk? Because that crosswalk is problematic. Mm -hmm. And I think like if we had a station in the street, I know we lose some parking, but it would make it it gives some some visibility for people trying to cross the street at town hall. So it serves two purposes: to get a dock close to town hall and sure. make it safer to cross. So it's certainly possible to put it across the street from town hall and the, there's, I believe, four parking spaces across the street there. There's three between the crosswalk and uh, I think it's center, center Street, and then one that's on the other side of the crosswalk next to the Citizens Bank. Um, the, the, well, the issue is we would have to put it on the side of the crosswalk that's, uh, I guess, closer to Academy Street or closer to Center Street. Um, because there wouldn't be enough space in front of the crosswalk, but you would end up with similar sight distance issues if you were to okay. put it on that side of the crosswalk to begin with. Okay. Um, so it certainly sure. it certainly could be done if you put it um, in the ones that are right in front of the, the barber shop and the other area. Um, but I think we were again sort of looking at it, or I was looking at it as those spaces would be more in demand. So can we? located in a place that's still a good location, but try to not take the total, the, take the most in-demand parking spots away. Gotcha, I understand. So I asked a question, I got a good answer. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Anstutz. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Carl. 
Um, thank, thank you very much. Um, so my understanding from reading the materials is that um, if we had a case where a station was on a sidewalk, that blue bikes would come and, and uh, shovel it out, although I don't think we have any here that are on sidewalks. So I think my questions might be might be directed towards the town manager. Um, partly is, um, do we have specific concerns around plowing around uh, these stations? I'm thinking specifically the, well, any of the on-street on street spaces. So I, I would punt a little bit back over to Dan. I, I think my understanding is that the ones that are on street will have to be removed because we would have those plowing concerns. Oh. Sure, I can I can talk a little bit to that, and then I might send it back over to Troy McHenry. Um, but the to, to get an idea of what other communities do, um, what I understand is that typically communities that have the blue bike stations on the sidewalks will not will keep them on the sidewalks during uh, over the course of the entire year, uh, so that they are operational over winter as well, uh, and blue bikes has a team that will come out and will shovel out those stations. And I believe it's whether they're on the sidewalk or they're on the, um, on the street, but it's actually more of the community's prerogative, whether or not we would want to keep, if they were in the street, whether we would want to keep them in the street. Um, I think that it might depend on, you know, blue bike certainly doesn't want their equipment to be hit by plows and we don't want that equipment to be hit by plows. Um, but in, so actually the one that we're looking at here on Linwood street was an example, uh, when I talked to the general manager where he said, well, this might be a situation where you could, if you're comfortable with it, keep it on the street because, um, this is a much lower traffic street. It's not like it's mass Ave where, you know, that would be uh, plowed very quickly and, um, very frequently and maybe, you know, more likely to risk getting hit by a plow. Um, but I'll, I'll throw it over to Troy to, um, if he can give more context about other communities. Yeah, I think that's well said, Daniel. Um, that, that's pretty much um, the long and the short of it. Uh, for, for the most part, any on-street station does get removed. So I, I believe in your contract, um, it does allow for uh, removal and, and for um, support fee. But um, yeah, otherwise, it's, it's probably suggested to, to keep it on-street if possible. Or, on ground if possible. Okay, thank you. So I guess that's that's a consideration with this this siting then. Um, mm -hmm. That uh, you know we would lose service. I understand. I mean, if it's snowy, you, you're not going to have as much use of these stations. But um, you know, usually the whole winter. If we had a winter like this this past one, there was barely any snow. Um, so uh, that that'd be, I guess, unfortunate. Um, I guess my other question is um, on the railroad lot. I cannot remember, and, and maybe somebody else does. Um, I know that there's a low um, kind of a guardrail along the bikeway. Is there a cut in that guardrail right near the station so that people um, taking the bikes could get right onto the bikeway from there? Yes, there is. There's a cut or a break in the guardrail that just across the street, you can go straight to Winslow Towers from there. Perfect, perfect. Okay, great. Um, I think those are all my questions. Thank you. Yeah. And just a couple questions. Just one you know, from an operational standpoint on something that Mr. McHenry had mentioned. So if someone is on a blue bike and they go to a station, the station's full, is it, I assume what they have to do is they have to keep driving till they go to the next one. And then if that's full, go to the next one. Correct, Mr. Chairman. There's no way or way for them to leave them there. So I guess from that standpoint, the density definitely makes sense in this situation. Um, and then how we're talking about removing and replacing the stations, how mobile, uh, how much of an undertaking is it to remove a station? Is it, you know, half a day job, day job? Uh, a, a few hours. A few hours. Yep. To well, hypothetically, I assume it's something 
because we sit here with our milder winters now. We're in January. It's good bike weather. Is it in some cities and towns? Is it they they see a storm coming? They go in, they remove the station, put it in storage, and then once the storm passes and clears out, they'll go put it back. Or is it more they remove it for the month of December, January, February, and put it back in March? Correct. It's 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 more the latter, where they're removing it for the duration of winter. Okay. Is that what the recommendation of blue bike is in the, in the situation if you're going to remove it for the winter? Or yeah, is it, I think I think there's a lot of variables um, which you, you you would need to weigh um, it, the traffic area, the, the the ability to plow the snow. I think yeah. all those are obviously major considerations. Um, so it really just depends on the comfort level, I think. Um, and then, generally speaking. Uh, if you were to uh, remove stations, we would suggest probably closer to December is when we would initially pull them. And yeah. then, um, you know, probably after February, you know, March, we can redeploy. Yeah. Just a suggestion is we're to planning department, town manager, ourselves. You know, I think these in Arlington, we get a lot of use for these, even in the winter months. So as we go in the next few months towards December, if we could, for the uh, stations that have to be removed, think of some off-street locations instead of just putting them away, I think that would be helpful if we can identify that. Okay. All right, so that on a motion from Ms. Mahan, seconded by Mr. DeCourcy, attorney Han. Ms. Uh, Ms. Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Curo? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. It's an unanimous vote. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. McHenry, for helping us out. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. All right. And next, we have Dan will remain with us for discussion and approval, final shared streets proposal. Dan, if you want to take the reins on that. I will. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, let me see here. Whoops. Sorry about that. Uh, all right. So I'm going to talk about um, a sort of an update follow up from the July 20th discussion that was um, uh, an update of what was happening with shared streets and sort of talk about where we've where we've gone since then, um, a few things are happening. Um, so we did about a week and a half ago, put out some more materials for Brooks Avenue. I'm going to show some pictures of that, and what it looked like, and just talk briefly about some comments I received. Uh, Mary Street, this is uh, be more of an approval to actually do a pilot on Mary Street. Um, I believe you received some some uh, correspondence from residents of the Mary Street area already. I'll talk briefly about that. Um, we did talk about Waldo and Amsden Road last time, and then I'll talk about some next steps of what's coming up. Um, I don't consider this sort of a final presentation, but uh, this is very much an ongoing uh, project. And so with the reinstallation of Brooks Avenue, as I said about a week and a half ago, um, in Preparation for this, I did send out an email to all of the residents who had commented previously on the Shared Streets project or uh, who had commented on the pilot itself um, or had otherwise had some kind of interest in this before. And then also I put out about 150 or 200 flyers along all of the um, Egerton, Melrose, Milton, uh, Varnum and Brooks Avenue that were within the specific area. Um, it was uh, you know, quite a bit of quite a bit of hard work, but um, I went out with the Public Works Department, and again, this is reflecting some changes, some lessons that we learned from the pilot, um, some things that we wanted to try, which I talked about at the last meeting. Moving on, um, so this is how we set up the intersection. As we discussed at the last meeting, we moved the sort of start of this to Brooks Avenue and Chandler Street. Um, and so this is, we, we had to kind of shimmy in this, uh, the large sign here because there's somebody who was parked across the street here. 
but um, this I, I have heard a bit of a concern about throwing more traffic up Chandler Street because of this. And so you can see there are some sort of unintended consequences uh, as we, we look at how we divert the traffic around. At, at the other locations, uh, I believe this is at Egerton, you know, much sort of lighter touch as opposed to trying to divert traffic immediately around it, trying to focus on where is the traffic coming from the most of the time. Um, and so this is sort of the soft gateway that I had talked about at the previous meeting. Um, and similarly at Varnum Street, we're trying to kind of narrow up the, the roadway so that it's not as easy for somebody to turn around, turn into the roadway very, very quickly. Um, since that's sort of the most common type of um, turning that you would get in there if you were turning right. And then trying out some of these traffic trees, traffic calming to kind of narrow the street using the, the horizontal methods that uh, we discussed at the last meeting. In this case, this is sort of trying to narrow it into a choke point where somebody will have to slow down, especially if somebody is oncoming from the other side, but trying to avoid keeping, trying to avoid creating an unsafe situation. Um, so that it is still wide enough for somebody, for two cars to get by, since this is a two-way street. And this is on Brooks. And then again, Brooks at Melrose, um, sort of creating more of a chicane, um, which is another way of sort of shifting the traffic so somebody can't zoom down uh, in a, a straight away, you know, especially if there are no cars parked here. There is a, some house construction that's going on, uh, especially at um, Brooks and Chandler, and I believe Brooks at Egerton which made this a little bit challenging to cite these um, and sort of contractor vehicles and, and construction vehicles parked on the street. Um, and that, that parking issues have, have come up as a concern um, because some of those vehicles are also parked very close to the intersections. And if you are walking, walking across the street, it's hard to see. Um, so those are some of the comments that I've gotten back, but I haven't heard of any um, major traffic safety complaints that uh, come along with this. Um, I was away last week, so I'm going to go out this week and take another look and see how things are going with this. Um, part of that is also um, asking the police department to take some more data collection like they did in the original pilot on the um, number of vehicles that are going down here and the speed of the vehicles and seeing if any of that has been significantly affected by these changes. Moving on to Mary Street, um, the so for the community engagement for this, you've already seen some of this, as I mentioned earlier. I emailed all the residents that had nominated Mary Street. They uh, got organized and I had a discussion over Zoom with them on August 6th. And they got together and got again, 39 emails with 37 in support of the project. Um, many of them from Mary Street, many of them from the neighborhood as well. And then also, excuse me, four petition signatures for it. Um, I believe you've seen you've seen that that information, um, but I can bring it up as well if we need to. So, when I had the discussion on August sixth, um, I had I had actually had or had created a concept for this of how it might work, and where these gateways might be, um, what kind of traffic calming we could do. Um, again, there's potential connections to do something more larger as a network in the future, um, but there was. So I put in this note says to be refined of resident input because there was a question about whether the gateway sort of locations would make sense. Um, the original idea that I had sort of is in this map showing sort of the major areas with the large stars. Um, basically, if you know, taking Mary Street from end to end and having the sort of major gateways at each of the extreme ends, and then having the smaller minor gateways. Um, within the middle of it, and then having various traffic calming elements in between there, which a uh, couple of ideas, again, this is simil very similar to what I was looking at or what I showed you on Brooks Avenue, sort of the choke point where people would um, again have to slow down to move through here. Um, and then it would, and there would be no parking here, but this would be something that would be there all the time as opposed to having parking cars that are there that are sometimes there and sometimes not. And then something that has been discussed, um, I think previously Public Works had looked into putting in things like mini traffic circles. Um, I've heard complaints that there are, um, I, this may be a four-way stop, but sometimes drivers don't pay attention to the stop sign and they continue on through when they shouldn't. And 
um, many traffic circles are actually a type of traffic calming that would replace things like four-way stops because the signage itself doesn't do as much as actually having that physical infrastructure in the street that forces people to go around it and again prevents them from going straight down the street um, and sort of seeing that van vanishing point at the end where they can just drive straight towards. And so these, again, these are ideas, um, I'm sorry, these are ideas to be refined with resident input, but um, these are the, this is sort of the general direction that we'd like to go. Um, and I'll talk in the next steps in a moment about um, sort of how we will get there. The, uh, I did reach out to residents of Walder Road and Anston Street, um, continued, uh, after continued discussion over email, um, apparently there's some difficulty with them getting my email originally. So I still have to work with them on outreach to get support for that. There is, there is interest in it, but um, at this time, I don't have sort of a, a list of, of emails or a list of written support like I have for Mary Street. So for the next steps, um, I believe that there is enough support for the Mary Street pilot to start with that. Um, again, refining the concept, uh, the concept and the type of traffic calming type of interventions. Um, applying, we, we are planning to apply for the MassDOT Shared Streets and Spaces grant, which provides funding for very this exact type of project. And through that, we could we could ask for materials um, that are beyond sort of cones and sandwich boards and things that we could um, try out over the course of several weeks or a couple of months. Um, I don't have a specific timeline, but certainly before the winter time. Uh, comes, in which case we'd probably have to take most of this out, but we would learn from it over the course of those months. Um, again, I work with the residents to for support of the Walder Road and Amston Street um, and monitoring Brooks Avenue over the next several weeks, as I know that the board approved going, uh, having that go through, I guess, mid-September now, whenever the beginning of school is, and to uh, come back to the board with what our findings are at that point. And that's the end of my presentation. So I'm happy to take any questions. Sorry, Mr. Carl, for any questions or motions? I'd like to move approval. And um, no, thank, thank you for the work. I mean, we did get all of the um, testimony from from folks on on uh, on Mary Street, um, that was great to read, and uh, I look forward to hearing what we get from uh, you know Waldo and Hamston. All right, thank you, Mr. Diggins. I'll second it, and um, I have no questions. I'm interested in seeing you know how the street is used uh, when things calm down. So, um, interested in the results. So, thank you very much for the great presentation, Tan. Thank you. All right. And Ms. Mahan? Um, oh, thank you. I'm also in support of this. And uh, I don't have any questions. All right. And Mr. Corsi? Yeah, thank you. I'm also in support of this and no questions. And I also support, I think, Mary Street is a perfect location for the next step of this project. And I look forward to seeing the results. All right, so we have a motion by Mr. Carlos, seconded by Mr. Diggins, Attorney Heim. Ms. Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Curo. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. It's unanimous vote. Yeah. And that. Moving on. And I'm going to ask Tom Manager. Is John Leone with us? Uh, yeah, I saw his name. Yes. So, so I think what I'm going to do, since we are, there's one article that requires someone else to be in the discussion, is going to bump up um, item number 18, discussion of the 2020 fall special top meeting. If you can bring up Mr. Leone.
John, are you with us? You might not have been expecting it, but I'll, I'll do him the courtesy if he's there. there. John, are you there? You're muted, John. Mute. Hey, am I working? Yep. Ah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right. We'll wake up after that. Try to last. spare you a couple of our articles. <laughs> yeah. All right. So this is, uh, we added this to the agenda this month at the request of a few town meeting members and some of the board members that want to just get a little more clarity as to what it's going to look like, you know, what our thoughts are for a fall special town meeting, um, what it's going to look like structurally, and, um, you know, we can kind of start the planning process for that. So, um, Mr. Loon, did you want to say anything in regards to what your thoughts are going forward before I go down the list of the board for comments? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I've been talking to Adam. Mr. Chaplain, we have been at preliminary discussions with the town of Lexington about maybe adopting their system or being able to use vast parts of it. We're going to have a further discussion with them tomorrow, um, I believe in the afternoon, and see if what they're willing to work with us. I, I'll let Adam speak to that a little more. He's had some preliminary discussions. Um, that would be a virtual town meeting. Um, even though we had a lot of fun in June on the town meeting, I'm not sure we want to go to another um, outside town meeting, especially in the fall, be too cold. Um, so I'm not sure that's going to work for us at, at all in, in that time of the year. So we'd have to go with a virtual of some sort. Um, <clears throat> As far as the meeting itself, my question is, would we be exploring a full 80 item warrant or a more pared down warrant or what was the, the board's thought on that? All right, and Mr. Chaplain, did you have anything to add? <clears throat> I would add two things. One, um, uh, the moderator is right on, we're meeting with the folks from Lexington tomorrow, we're meeting with a member of their select board, their town moderator, town manager, and I think a few other folks from their team to learn about the program that they wrote to help them manage a remote town meeting. Uh, I believe it was actually written by one of their select board members. So I know he is very willing to share with us. We, I think tomorrow we're gonna figure out mm -hmm. what sharing means, uh, <laughs> whether or not there's a fee associated with it, but um, I think we, we wanna learn from them about process, technology, resources that go go behind it. And I think they're, they're very willing to help us to make it happen. Um, yeah. From an article point of view, I certainly can't speak for the board on the broad range of articles, but from a financial perspective, given the positive news that came out of the State House uh, the week before last, uh, I think we can keep financial articles to a minimum. So that should at least shave some portion off the length of a warrant, um, you know, from, from the normal length we would be looking at. All right. I will turn to the board for any comments. Um, Mr. Jacorsi. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, thank you, Mr. Leone, for joining us tonight. I, um, I, I'm happy to have this discussion because I think it's important that we do have a fall town meeting and I, curious to see what the other board members uh, think about you know, what would be on the warrant. I mean, I think at a minimum, we've, we've got to, got to um, seek input from the people that we asked back in the spring to defer their, their warrant articles in terms of what they would um, be willing to do and take that into account um, in, in scheduling a town meeting. I think it makes perfect sense to have a virtual town meeting. Um, and, you know, there, there'll be timing issues in terms of whether October or November is the appropriate time, but um, I, um, I'm, I'm, I think it's important to have this discussion and, and to, to, to start planning. All right, and Mr. Diggins? 
Well, some of you know that I've been thinking about this a lot. And, and I think, you know, as far as how much we do, I mean, well, we'll do as much as the town meeting members want to do. Uh, and, and, and I think the timing is pretty locked in uh, because there's a lot of preparation that goes on before this. I mean, first off, we have to rehear a lot of the articles. Now, clearly, if we cut down on the articles, then we have to have less hearing time. But let's let town meeting members decide uh, or the proponents of the articles decide the, what it is that we will hear um, during the town meeting. So I'm thinking the best time to start it will be that Monday after the election. That would be November 10th. And, and that would give us two weeks um, before Thanksgiving. So that would be four four of sessions and maybe we can get through it all then probably not but then we would come back in the wednesday after thanksgiving and 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 then we'll go for as long as people want uh and i don't think they'll want to go on too much longer but maybe another two sessions or so uh and and so uh, that would be the timing for me and 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 i think we, this would be, be um something that we would learn from because we're going to have to do it again in the spring. I mean, I, I, it's very likely. I mean, we're not going to be meeting, you know, with everyone uh, in person in the springtime. So I am all for this. I mean, and and um, Lexington's done it. We can do it. I and mean, uh, we'll need to have time for practice. And that's another reason, too, that we won't do it until, or I don't think we can do it until um, November because we get the technology. Let's say we get technology in place I mean, by the beginning of October. My understanding is that it takes some training, mean, and so let's allow me plenty of time for training so that people are really comfortable with technology, and and so um, that's all. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, I'm, I'll leave it to the powers that be that are continuing and going to have contact with Lexington from. Um, Materials I got from Lexington, it seemed like the main point is, and if you all could um, find out and include that back in your report, that um, having the person or the person with the uh, technological experience that creates and hosts the platform, that seemed to be sort of the big thing that allowed them to do that. And I don't know if that's something, um, if it's when they say platform, um, it obviously must be some piece of hardware. And so um, to me, that seemed to be the big thing that allowed them to do it. And then if I could ask um, through the chair, am I correct that um, I agree with my colleagues, ask the proponents if they want to go ahead in October, November, or want to wait for the spring. Um, am I co my two questions are, am I correct with the Warren articles that we tabled if the proponents um, Say they would like to go on the special fall town meeting. Do we have to have another Warren article hearing for them, or can the original one we had back in the spring? And then my can count. And then my second question would be: um, Am I correct that um, in terms of setting the parameters for what a special town meeting will look like in the fall, um, we still do we open the we can't open the warrant and say. Uh, this is just for those table articles. We'd have to open it for a certain amount of time. And if somebody else put in a Warren article, then we would have to do what we did with the table articles, which is have uh, open and closing of a warrant, schedule a Warren article here, hearing to the select board, and then town meeting. So those are my two questions, and I know I should have asked them more succinctly. Attorney yeah. Hine. Um, I just want to make sure I understand both the questions. Uh, one of them I understand is um, that the issue is if we open a special town meeting warrant for the purpose of bringing back, put, putting forth the articles that were sort of suspended, if you will, from 2020 town meeting, do we have to allow for other folks to submit new articles? I think the answer to that is probably yes, although the special town meeting threshold is a little bit higher in terms of signatures than and um, I'm sorry, what was the first question? The first question was, um, do we have to start the process all over for the Warren articles that we tabled, or can we count the Warren article hearings that we had back in February, March? Um, so, just a lot. Ago. That's an excellent question, Thank you. Um, I think 
with respect to the board, as the board may recall, there is no statutory requirement for you to have any hearings whatsoever. What I would suggest is that I would submit the votes and comments of all previously held articles for the board to consider and review. And if the board decided that it wanted to rehear any articles or change anything or just accept those votes, then you'd basically be all set. It's a little bit more complicated for the um, ARB because they have to follow a, a, a statutory process to notice their hearing again. But again, there's nothing that would prevent them from basically saying, you know, we're incorporating into the record of this fresh new hearing the, the prior proceeding. So the short answer to it is uh, you can incorporate your prior proceedings. You could decide as the select board that that's enough discourse and discussion on these articles, or you could have more process if you so chose. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm definitely being guided by my colleague's um, preference on that. I think we should take them as a case-by-case -case basis with, I think, the majority of them. We probably won't necessarily have to have re-warrant article hearing, um, but if um, Maybe just have the caveat that if any member of the board um, is so inclined to have a second warrant article hearing, um, just to uh, communicate with uh, the chair, uh, Attorney Heim, and the town manager, and then go from there. But th that's just my off the top of my head idea. Thank you very much. All right. Yeah, Mr. Carl. Thank you very much. Yes, we, I, I think we do have to go forward um, this this fall, and the world's changed so much just in the last few months since um, so much just in the last few months since we were planning uh, the annual. I mean, we're sitting here right now, and the first of our two major political parties is having their entire convention virtual. So I think we can pull off the um, special town meeting. My my inclination would be as far as this this whole question of how we handle the warrants. I mean, we had made a, a promise to proponents that we would um, resubmit them. But the thing that is, we had a number of those articles. Some of them we voted no action on technical grounds. Some of them we voted no action on substantive grounds. Some of them we voted positive action. And then um, some of the situations have changed and some of the proponents um, may have another action that they would like to pursue or not pursue at, at all. I mean, um, I, I think, for example, the fossil fuel, I know that, that, that a lot of the situation around that has, has changed quite a bit um, since, since we had our hearings. So my inclination would be that we would reach out to the proponents of um, any of the citizen warrant articles and ask them, A, do you wish to have your article appear on on the warrant again because in some of these situations i mean we we clearly voted no action on substantive grounds so they might not want to wish might not want to go through the exercise again if you wish to re resubmit it you wish to resubmit new language which we could submit on their behalf not not implying any support of of that that language i think we'd have to go through the whole hearing process on those again or do you wish to withdraw and just not not resubmit um, at all. That would be my inclination. My inclination, as far as the the warrant though, would be to keep it open. I mean, we've had situations for special town meetings. We've only had the warrant open for a day, which which really narrows that window for something unexpected to come in and be added on onto it. So, if you ask me what my preference would be, that would be my preference to reach out to the proponents. Do you wish to resubmit? Do you wish, if yes, do you wish to resubmit with the exact same language as you had before? Or do you wish to provide new language and we'll rehear it? And, um, and we go from there. Yeah, and yeah, my comments are similar to what Mr. Carl just said, is that you know, we had made a commitment, I think, to the proponents of the Warren articles for the annual town meeting that we were gonna hear the articles in the fall, however, that we had whatever that meeting had to look like. And, you know, there are certain, I think we should allow them to reach out to them individually, allow them to either resubmit 
if they have modifications, they should be free to do so. And if, if they want to withdraw, they can do and they can do that as well. Um, so I think that would be my inclination as well. And, you know, I think when we first did this, we had kind of a little bit of faint hope that come fall, we could have a special town meeting in the manner that we generally could, but that has gone by the wayside. So it, it looks like, you know, however we have to figure out, we have to do it and we have to do it virtually. So, you know, I look forward to the discussions between our town staff and town of Lexington. Clearly they have a more talented select board that could pull this off, but you know, no imitation. Big exception to that. The best form Mr. of time, right? Um, so I guess, Mr. yes. Yeah, I just want to point out, I think there were only 13 citizen articles okay. submitted last spring. Yep. And I believe six, five or six of them were by one individual. So there's yep. not a lot of citizen articles. Um, okay that we are gonna be bringing back. But you know, they obviously have their right to do so. Yep. Um, before you set the date, take into account that there's gonna be a learning curve for myself, um, Mr. Chapdelaine's staff. Um, Lexington had between eight and 12 town employees behind the scene running the virtual town meeting. So we're gonna to have to line up staff to do that. We're gonna to have to train them. I'm gonna to have to get trained. And then each town, um, each precinct in Lexington, they have nine precincts. Each precinct had a one night, two hour training session on how to do town meeting. So we project into those time frames the training that's going to be necessary for town meeting members and our staff. It's the beginning of October, November might be about right. I wouldn't want to go any earlier than that. So Mr. Diggum's um, time frame of early November would be about, I think the earliest we could do it and have a successful meeting. Yeah. So my question to the board that I was going to pose, we have a, a suggestion for a no November 10th meeting. Do we want to take motion on a November 10th meeting at this point or would, with the understanding, I think there's general consensus here that we're going to have meeting around this time do we want to ha have our town staff speak with the members of lexington get an idea of what the layout looks like for that and then set the meeting at our first meeting set the date at our first meeting in september cool. so I'll go to mr diggins so i mean as much as i was pushing for the tenth i mean i i think we can have that as a soft date in mind I mean, let's talk with people, you know, staff and whatnot, and find out I mean, if that will work for them, and, uh, and 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 then go from there. Let's get a little more information, I mean, but have that as our our soft target, and and, and unless something changes our mind, I mean, we'll come back at the next meeting and set it in stone. Yeah, and getting a nod of approval from Mr. Carl. Yeah, no, I was just going to say I would agree with uh, Mr. Diggins. Let let's have it as a soft target, but but let let's find out what we what we find out from uh, Lexington about the the level of effort and and um, you know also I think typically what we would want to do I think is is come back and have the um, the vote for the the date of the town meeting as well as the the vote for when we open and close the warrant be, be before us as you know, two separate votes and all prepared. So um, that's kind of my feeling on that. Um, and I, I did want to clarify one thing too, that what I was suggesting on on uh, submission of warrant articles, if, if we were so inclined, I, I was suggesting that the board will resubmit on behalf of the proponents. I think we were all an understanding of that. So. Yes, yep. that's, that was the plan. With no signature requirement. Yep. Ms. Mahan, does that work? Well, no, I'm disregarding me. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that, that, that I understand now. Thank you so much. Yep. Okay, I, I agree. I think we should wait until the September meeting, get a report back. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right. And Mr. Corsi? Yeah, I agree with that as well. Okay. So unless I am missing anything, I don't think we have any vote to be taken at this point. Correct, Attorney Heim? Not unless the board wants to take a specific 
uh, action or, or report back. Again. Yeah, I think we'll, you know, we'll put this on the agenda for the next, for the our first September meeting. And then at the, that time, we'll have a little more clarity on where we stand. And then we can put some more specific information down. Can I make one request? Yes. That not all town meeting members have given us email addresses. If they're going to want to log on to a virtual meeting, we need an email address. Um, we've been asking for it. A lot of them are reluctant to do so. I don't understand why. Um, but if they want to be part of a virtual town meeting, they have to contact um, myself uh, or the clerk and give us a email address. Um, otherwise, we we can't contact them. They can't they can't play. If they okay. want to. They have to do it. So if you guys can somehow get that out to them, that would be really appreciated. Okay. Thank you. Let's start getting that information. All right. Thank you, Mr. Leone. Thank you all. All right. So we are moving back up to item number 14 on the agenda for approval letter of support for MassWorks grant from Mr. Chaplain. So I, uh, that, that was actually placed as a placeholder while we were doing more research on the grant. Uh, what we're hoping is that we might be able to apply for a MassWorks grant for the work that we're going to start planning for Mass Ave and Appleton and that corridor in conjunction with the potential for um, the development that will be discussed in the next agenda item, as well as the potential for the development of the hotel uh, near that intersection. I think as the board will recall, the MassWorks grant prioritizes transportation infrastructure improvements that are adjunct to economic development or housing development uh, properties. So this would be a perfect opportunity for it. Where we are right now in the design phase, we're not quite ready to make an application, but as we advance in studying that corridor and both the hotel and 1165 Mass Sav projects advance through their processes, we'll be in a better position to apply and we'll come back to the board and ask for that letter of support. You're not looking at any action on this right now. Thank you. You hear that? All right, so that brings us to number 15 for approval letter to Mass Housing regarding 1165R Massachusetts Avenue from Attorney Heim, if you want to present. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, as the board will recall, when a applicant proposes the first phase of a 40B that receives the financing and the work here, they have to obtain a uh, project eligibility um, and site approval from Mass Housing. This uh, draft letter before you attempts to encapsulate what I understand um, is the board's overall sort of perspective uh, with respect to the proposal 1165 RMS F. Uh, the board's initial view with respect to eligibility and site approval is sort of a 500 foot view. Uh, given the timing restrictions that we're under as well as some of the operational difficulties of, of in COVID-19, what I've sort of developed again is a, a letter that would be accompanied by uh, any recommendations that the beta group uh, uh, would provide uh, for mass for mass housing with respect to things to look at for the applicant um, with an eye to just sort of informing that process. You have the option to uh, support, um, oppose, or basically comment on in a little bit more of a nuanced way. Um, so after uh, an initial sort of draft this is sort of put forth to you as a way of trying to encapsulate uh, some of the pros and cons of the project the way I understand them from the board's perspective. Uh, obviously, since the board can't sort of discuss something as a group uh, outside of a posted meeting, I'm uncomfortable with any changes that the board wants to make or any debates the board wants to have. Um, ultimately, I'd be looking for an approval for this letter as a framework that then you could uh, afford Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Hurd as the chair, the discretion to um, tweak, 
to make sure it fits perfectly sort of after this discussion. And that's consistent with, with what we've done relative to Thorndike Place. Mr. Greeley signed the letter on behalf of the board um, after some sort of final tweaks were made. So I'm happy to answer any questions that I can. I've tried to highlight uh, my understanding of uh, the many factors that uh, are at work here, um, but I think it's really up to the board uh, what they want the tenor of this letter to be and what uh, subject matters they want to cover. Thank you. And before I turn to the board, just to go through a few items, I have been in discussion with Attorney Heim on this. And just for clarification, there was a little confusion as it was posted for approval, as Attorney Heim said, you know, the approval that's listed isn't the approval of the project per se, but we're approving the letter that's presented to us and approving a framework for which we are to submit our comments. Um, as Attorney Heim said, as we go through, you know, so we have, like, like you said, we have the ability to support the project, not support the project, or just provide comments. So if board members can, in addition to their comments, both good and bad about the project, just let us know if it would be your preference to support the project, not the project, not support the project, or just leave it as a letter of comment. And then what, as he Attorney I mentioned with a, unfortunately this came over the summer where we only meet a few times. And so the timing on this is not ideal with when the letters do with in conjunction with the number of meetings that we have to really develop a, 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 a letter to put in front of the board that encapsulates all the board's comments to approve on. So if the board is so inclined, we can determine whether or not we want the letter to be support, not support, or just a comment letter. And we we can generate all the uh, comments of the board to add to the letter um, any negatives, any positives that, that want to be included in addition to what's put in front of us. And if you want to, if they trust me to, and Attorney Heim to take those comments and put them in the finalized letter, then you can let us know if that's, the way you want to go on this. So with that, I'll turn to the board. Um, Mr. Diggins. Um, well, I, I still support the project. And I think the letter is a really good framework. And uh, my, my, um, I had a big concern about the, the artists. And I think uh, that point is driven home a lot. And, uh, and the, the comment about uh, getting more affordable units um, is very good, I mean, and and so I support the project. I would support this framework and allow. Uh, and of course, I trust you, uh, dear chair and and town council, me to tweak it in a way that uh, I would be happy with. And then that's it. Thanks. All right, Ms. Bond. Um, I see where I had my comments. Um, I will second Mr. Dagan's motion for a letter of support. Um, Mr. Dagan spoke about the uh, couple of paragraphs that are in there concerning the arts community as well as affordable housing. And the other reason that I'm comfortable um, sending this in as a letter of support is that um, we have language in there that this is the beginning of the process and this letter of support from the select board um, is truly just from us and um, the, the Zoning Board of Appeals, which I think is next in the process as this goes through, if it goes through the normal course, um, that we're not binding them. You know, they'll have their separate hearing and pending um, the results of that, um, we'll see where we'll go. we're going. So it's, it's the first of, of two or three yeses that this development needs. Um, so for all those reasons, I'm, I'm in support of it. Thank you. All right, Mr. DeCorsi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just want to, we had a couple different versions that um, Attorney Heim had sent out. I think what we're discussing now is, is a letter that while is supportive of a number of things regarding affordable housing raises concerns as well. So is it that the, the letter of comment that has both the positives and, and the 
the concerns in it that were that's before us right now? So it, it's a letter of comment that Attorney Hine had sent out, but I can, Mr. Dickens can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think what, what we're doing is because of the time constraint is having a discussion as to what should be in the final letter, both any additional concerns, any additional positives, and then ultimately whether or not we as a board want to send the letter along as a letter of support. So I believe what the motion is to add language similar to you know, what was initially proposed that says we as a board support the project and then take a vote on that. Okay, and it, with, with the concerns that Attorney Hine mentioned regarding the, the, the artist yep. so space, any for example. Concerns or, or positives that the board member has, even in addition to what was in the letter before us, will add into the final letter. Okay, I, I, I think the letter captures the, the positives and, and as well as the concerns. So I can support that. I have a concern as to timing um, and I know we're gonna decide when our next meeting is uh, later tonight. Um, and I note that Mass Housing is, is expecting a letter from us on September 7th, which I think really will be September 8th because September 7th is Labor Day. Um, so I, while I can support what, what's in here, I, I'd almost feel better if there was a few more weeks to hear more input and, and in particular, there's some other boards in town. The ARB, for example, is discussing this tonight. We don't have the benefit of their comments or any other comments from um, town boards or, or, or agencies. So while I can, get behind what, what what's here I, I I'd like to to um, have the opportunity maybe to have a further vote if we have a meeting on time if not authorize you mr. chair to to to, to send the letter based on the comments we had tonight I, I, I wouldn't want to send the letter tomorrow I guess that's my point I, I, I think we should wait um, you know a little bit more time before that goes out yeah and attorney Heim, do you have any comments on Mr. Corsi's comments? No, uh, the, so the, the, the planning director is sort of coordinating the public comments on this, I know, not public comments, sorry, committee comments on this. So she's asked for them by August 30th, but Mr. Corsi is correct that the um, mass housing will receive comments until uh, I believe the date was September 7th and that is Labor Day. So practically speaking, September 8th. So if the board has another meeting, it certainly can. Um, you know, consider additional information. Um, but if the board is comfortable expressing its overall view um, and we're more adjusting what's found, I think we, whatever the board decides to do, we can work that piece of it out. I guess an obvious question to have would be for this limited matter, would it be would the board prefer to schedule a meeting before August 31st? Um, Mr. Corsi, is that in line with what you'd prefer in this? Or, or, or before September 7th. I mean, I, I, I'm not looking to schedule more meetings for everybody, but okay. I think um, I, I think we have the, the, the workings of, of, of where we are as a board. We haven't heard yet from, from you and Mr. Curl yet, but um, I think it would be nice to have one more look at the letter especially where there is there's time to get it into mass housing and and maybe there are some things that um, can be addressed either from the public or or from the uh, proponent of the project too if there are things that they um, you know based on what they're hearing that they'd like to to get back to us on in terms of what what may or may not go into a letter so attorney Heim, can we go past the date set by the planning department to get our comments in if they're two on the seventh um, I think that the, the, the nuanced answer to that is yes. If you, the, the comments are due on the 7th, comments are due on the 7th. Um, and if the, I guess I just communicate to the planning director that the board would like, you know, to have further input um, to cultivate its letter because the board is ultimately the entity that is going to be, um, the way I understand it uh, is that from their 
smart growth criteria, one of the things they consider is whether or not there's support from the chief executive body of the town, which is you. Um, so if you support it, it favors their scorecard. If you don't support it, it's you know one sort of notch that they don't have in favor of uh, getting uh, eligibility and, and site approval. So um, from that perspective, if the board thinks it would be uh, useful to be making its ultimate determination uh, after hearing more information, right, but I think we can advise the planning director. See, Adam's got his hand up. Yep. That's my, that's my opinion. Yeah, Mr. Chaplin. Just two thoughts. Um, so if I'm understanding right, Doug, the planning director's request is for departments to have their comments submitted by August 30. Um, and then our mass housing deadline is September 7th. Given the prior conversation we just had about town meeting and the need to pick a date and open the warrant for town meeting and give enough time for hearing and the odd falling of Labor Day this year on September 7th, it's sounding like a meeting on August 31st is, I mean, I, I, I don't want to tell the board what to do in that regard, but it sounds like the first meeting of September sh maybe should end up being on August 31st, if that makes sense. Um, so just food for thought in how we could process this. Uh, and I, I would also add that Julia Myrak is asking for an opportunity to address the board um, in her in the comments if you if you if the board so chooses to hear from her yeah i didn't i didn't want to be the chair that set the precedent for two august meetings but giving the it could be it looks based on where we are and to make for a little more cleanliness that you know we'll address this a couple items down but it's probably best to set our next meeting on August 31st and that's where it, it really would fall in the cycle anyways and then with that you know we could have a finalized letter for the 31st attorney hi I have to apologize I, it looks like I, I I misspoke it looks like the deadline for comments to the planning director is August 31st which makes sense because that's a Monday um, it wouldn't make any sense for the comment deadline to be the 30th which is a Sunday I don't think that necessarily materially changes anything for the board because the board would have the benefit of whatever was received. Um, yeah. Sorry, Adam. Sorry. Well, and, and I think we could talk to Jenny tomorrow and to the departments that are tasked with responding and based on everything we've discussed, see if they could have their comments in by the Thursday prior, which I guess would be what, 30, 20, uh, 27th. Um, you know, it's a few days. Um, it might be possible, if not, you know, to get some, if not all, sure. a few days in advance for the board's review before the 31st. Okay. All right. So I'll go to Mr. Caro and then I will uh, turn to Ms. Myrak. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, I would like us to be able to come back and, and incorporate anything else that come, comes up. In general, I think that this letter, um, you know, captures things pretty well a, as it is. Um, uh, you know, it's predominant. <clears throat> the preponderance of what's in here is very positive towards the proposal. I think it reflects a lot of our discussion from the last um, last hearing. I I wouldn't even mind if we specifically stated uh, within the letter that 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 um, this has been a cooperative um, uh, endeavor. Uh, on the flip side, though, I think it, it you know we do have an obligation to uh, represent. Some of the concerns that have been raised by our constituents, and I think that there are really three types of concerns that I've heard uh, most often. And I suspect this is probably the case for most of us. Um, you know, one is the the loss of uh, creative studio space and and um, a sustainable you know energy business that were that was in there. So the loss of commercial and and uh, uh, studio space. Um, one is the mix of affordability on the project. I think we've heard that um, a lot. And, um, and then from some people, we, I think we've heard about the, um, you know, while we know that there's a lot of historic reuse within the proposal uh, as a whole, there, there is still the loss of the, the oldest building on the, on the site. So I think just making sure that, that we're 
representing what we have heard from our constituents within the letter, which I, I think Mr. Heim has done a, a good job of um, of capturing here. Um, you know, I'm I'm pretty comfortable with the, with with the way the letter is constructed now, but I I would prefer to have a, an opportunity for us to come back with any additional uh, to incorporate any additional comments if if there's any anything new that 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 is uh, brought to bear. Yeah, and I agree with that. I think being able to come back um, with a finalized letter is certainly better than just tasking me to and Attorney Heim to to uh, you know put together comments as we see them now. You know, I do think this is. I still think this is a great project, and I think this fills a need in Arlington. Um, you know, we we have received a lot of you know the main criticism that we've recently received is the loss of artist space, which, you know, arts and culture is so important to the town, it's the town's residents, and we want to make sure as a town that we're, we're uh, supporting our local artists. So whatever pr solutions we can come up with, either within the project or outside of the project, I think it's, you know, between town administration and this board, it's our duty to do so. I had spoken briefly to the town manager today about the potential of setting up some sort of a order commission locally um, that would help local artists that have been displaced either by this project or any project. You know, there's a lot of change in the world right now, and you know, our planning department has a it has a direct line to a lot of the property owners in town, and unfortunately, based on the situation we live in a lot of businesses are moving out and there's a lot of space opening up. So it could be a good resource um, for local artists to find spaces to connect artists with, with landlords, but that's something that we'd have to discuss further. But um, with that, uh, if we can promote Ms. Myrak to address the board. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for um, giving us the time. I'm wondering, Adam, would it be possible to um, also allow our partner, Daniel St. Clair, to be um, on the call with me and yes, be able to me. comment if he oh. um, so desires? <laughs> yep, all set. Great, thanks. Um, first of all, thanks for your time. Um, we understand this is the beginning of a process also it's not the uh, it's not the end and there's 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 lots of time for things to um, change and um, move forward um, we have obviously not had sufficient time to review this letter as um, well as we would like to um, we just actually are seeing it for the first time maybe an hour or two ago so um, we appreciate all the positive comments that were put in there um, the remarks regarding the conformity to the master plan, the site improvements, the historic property um, uh, preservation, the Millbrook, et cetera. Um, and we really appreciate your stating that um, we did our best to try to conform to what the town is looking for in new developments and residential developments. Um, however, it appears that there are at least two issues that um, you as a board seem to have some concern about um, and are not quite consistent with what we had presented. And so I think we would also like the opportunity to have a little bit more time to respond to um, the letter, to give you guys more information, to try to work together so that um, this can be a letter of support because we feel um, that it's really important for the project um, to have a letter of support if possible, as opposed to just a letter of comment. Um, and we'll do whatever we can to help um, give you the information that you need in order to um, supply us with the letter of support. Um, if you don't mind, I'll just respond very quickly to the two issues that you brought up. Um, the first one being the affordability issue. Um, first and foremost, it is an affordable housing project. Um, we're obviously going through the 40B process and all of that is state regulated. Um, we are happy to work with the town to see if there's a way to um, increase affordability. Um, I know that 
Jenny Raid had mentioned there may be some programs out there. Um, there may be uh, ways that perhaps the town could contribute. And so we're more than willing to work with the town to see if it um, could be changed in any way affordability. Um, but we don't wanna set expectations in this letter um, promising something that we may, we may not be able to deliver as far as economic feasibility. Um, so I think that's something we'd like to talk to you about. Um, and the second one is the artist space. I think that most of the individuals on the board here know um, how much a support our family has been to the artist community in Arlington. As I said before, we've um, owned the property for over 50 years. We've had artists in there almost that whole time. We have rented to them at significantly below market rents. Um, and it's been our pleasure to do so, but it's time for the building to um, move on to its next life. And in order to do that, there's a tremendous amount of, um, of um, I'm sorry, there's a, there's a tremendous amount of um, money that needs to be put into this project. Um, we need to bring you new, new utilities to the site. The whole bridge has to be redone, life safety, life safety systems. So it's, it's, a major, um, it's a major project. And to be able to continue to have artist space the way it is right now, making the investment that needs to be made in order to bring these buildings um, forward and let them live the next 100 years of their life, um, it's just not economically feasible to do both and to subsidize the artists on top of the affordable housing, it's, you know, it makes it, it makes it almost impossible. So, but we are happy to talk about that too. Um, happy to hang up some artwork, um, display artwork in, in, the, in the new building, perhaps some sculptures outside. Um, we have a, um, program going with the Arlington Center for the Arts right now where we're doing the same thing over at Work Bar and we'd be happy to um, continue that. So we'd like to work with the town on both these issues. Um, and we would like the opportunity to um, spend some more time talking about it prior to your writing your letter. Um, because as I said before, it, it, we're looking for a letter of support and we hope that what additional information we may have to give you could perhaps um, change some of the language that you use in the letter. Um, and I'll open it up, Daniel, if you wanna um, add anything. Well, uh, Julia, I, I, it's hard to add anything more to that. I, you know, you can uh, hear in Julia's words how it, it would be so much easier for us to just say, sure, we'll do whatever you guys want, but th there, are, there are definitely limits to the practical and financial feasibility of what we can do. And this project is already really stretching us. Um, and, you know, the, the guidelines that the state has in the 40B program are, you know, not kind of squish, squishy and aspirational. They are chiseled in stone. And um, so uh, you, you have Julia and Mai's promise and the companies that stand behind us that we will do our best, our, our dead level best to work with the town and try to refine to try to best meet these goals. Um, and, but we want to be honest with you about, you know, the, the limits of that are not boundless. Um, and in the conversations that we've had before there, there was uh, some feedback that there might be some programs and other things that we could take advantage of. And we just haven't had those conversations yet. So um, we look forward to that. We definitely um, strongly seek a letter of support from all of you. Um, and you have our pledge that we will work our best to try to find the right resolution on all of the great points that you brought up. So um, I guess with that, maybe we let you do your work and uh, get you back to your agenda. And we look forward to having whatever ongoing discussions that we can have with you um, um, tomorrow, the next day, and, and ahead of uh, whenever your next meeting occurs. So we hopefully can get this done and keep the thing moving. All right, and so now we're gonna have this put for, forward on our meeting in two weeks from now, um, given Attorney Himes 
time constraints right now if you could get and he can comment if this works for him but i would think if you could get us comments or responses within the next seven days maybe by next monday that would work so we can incorporate it into the letter and i'll turn to attorney Heim to see if that time frame works yep of course yep okay so we'd look for comments by say next monday would that you think that would work on your time frame sure yep just so we can finalize this okay all, all right. right thank you thank you all right so let me see so attorney Heim, will we have have a motion to push this to our next meeting or yeah i guess i've been looking for a motion to table until august 31st I if that's, that's amenable to the board of course yeah. second Sorry, and who made the motion? Ms. Mahan. I think I think Mahan. Mahan. Yeah. All right. So a motion to table this till August thirty first by Ms. Mahan, seconded by. Sorry, I lost it. Mr. Carroll. Mr. Carroll. Attorney Heim. Ms. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Jacorsi. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Churro. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. And so. Great. And that brings us to item number 16, discussion of joint goal setting meeting with the Arlington Redevelopment Board. Mr. Town Manager. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So the board may recall it feels like a very, very long time ago now that the board had a joint meeting with the Redevelopment Board. And at that time, we talked about setting a joint goal setting session, um, which I think we can still discuss. Uh, or I think we could also discuss setting a goal setting session for this board and setting just another joint meeting uh, with the redevelopment board to regroup uh, after um, really what has been the past seven or eight months since our last meeting and everything that's happened and sort of realign where we see things going. Uh, again, just based on the differences in the world we're living in as compared to just a few months ago. So I, I'm, I'm open to the board's feedback. I, I think at this point, I would lean towards recommending that we put a goal setting date in the books and then also offer some dates to the ARB for a joint meeting of the two bodies. Uh, but Happy to hear the feedback of the board of the board if they'd like to go in a different direction. Um, if the board does agree, I think we should pick a goal setting session for ourselves um, tonight if we can. And then maybe I can work with you and get a couple dates from you to share with the redevelopment board uh, for a joint meeting um, in, in, the, in the upcoming days. And this is a, the goal setting meeting, is a meeting that we generally have in July, which we didn't have this year due to the circumstances. But I will turn to the board for comments and suggestions as to a, a date that would work for the goal setting meeting or time frame. Uh, Ms. Mahan? Um, I, guess, I guess I had sort of anticipated that the goal setting meeting, in my head, I was thinking it would happen in September. But if my colleagues want to have a third meeting in August and really just be crazy trendsetters, um, I, I would say that um, we look to sometime in the first three weeks of September. It doesn't have to necessarily be a Monday night. We could do like a, what we've done before was a Thursday night. And we started at like 5, 536. But um since we're all be home, we don't have to worry about getting sandwiches and all that. Um, and then that way, you know, um, town employees are there later on Thursday anyway. So, um, so I'll, I'll be guided by what my colleagues say, but my m mindset is uh, for our goal setting meeting, it's a Thursday sometime in September. Um, and then in terms of offering, I would say two dates, um, to the redevelopment board for a joint meeting. Um, 
I, again, it would be guided by my colleagues, um, but if we could find uh, one week where neither one, neither board is meeting that Monday night anyways, and then perhaps offer them a second night that week, whether it's Wednesday or Thursday. Um, and I'm not really sure, it, but I'm thinking that I'm hearing from the town manager that that should also occur in September, but maybe towards the end of September. So that's what I put out on the table for discussion. Okay. And Mr. Carroll? I, I was just frantically looking through um, yeah. my calendar. I mean, I, I, I think I, I like Ms. Mahan's uh, suggestions. It looks like as far as Monday, Mondays go, and I know we're going to be discussing this in terms of our meetings, there really are only two Mondays in, in September and um, the 14th and the 21st. Um, but as far as our goal setting, I mean, I'd be fine with any of the Thursdays that our goal setting, if we wanted to do it the 10th or um, but I'm in line with uh, Ms. Mahan's thinking on this. Mr. DeCorsi. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I, I'm fine. I did, her dates in September, September 10th is fine with me. And then depending on how we vote on our, um, or select our dates for our meetings, we can maybe select a date in September, maybe early October for the, the second date for the joint meeting. All right, and Mr. Diggins. So was it initially that we we're thinking about doing goals with, with um, the redevelopment board that we're both going to do goals? Was that originally the intent? Yeah, I don't think we hammered out all the details, but I think we were going to have our goal setting meeting and then have the ARB join us. Okay, so, so there's never any thought about us both doing goal setting at the same time? No, there there was, but we, we set that expectation when we thought we were going to be having the opportunity to begin ramping up a more townwide discussion about housing and zoning. That I hasn't see. occurred yet. So I, I got you. I, I understand. Okay. Rather than continuing continuing to let it just roll, I, I feel like we need to we need to do our goal setting while resetting the conversation with the A. Gotcha. Okay, fine, fine. I understand now. So then um, I'm in agreement with um, what everyone else has said. So um, any Thursday we'll do at this point being in. And uh, yeah, uh, I guess I'm thinking that we'll probably have our our meeting uh, on the 14th and the 28th. And so that will lead the 21st before joint meeting. No, that's not with Joe. Okay. The 20th, well, whatever. The 28th is Yom Kippur. So we probably would, I would generally would avoid that. Yeah. Okay. All right. You know, so. Uh, well, whatever you all want to do, I'll do. I can make it work. I mean, at this point, so I'm easy. Okay, so I think. Oh boy, did everybody on the board speak? And then I'll think. Uh, yeah, I'll you, what you can make said. the motion. That's. I'm in agreement with what everyone said. Okay. How about? Um, and I understand we're going to get to setting our select board meeting in an agenda item. I should. So I'm just going to stick to the two things that um i make a motion please someone amend it if i'm not encapsulating this that uh september 10th at thursday got it i didn't hear people per preferred five or six five to, five that... okay okay thursday september 10th at 5 30 would be the select board and town managers goal setting meeting and that in terms of mm, what I would say, and we haven't had this conversation yet, but um, unless when we set our agenda, it has to be changed that we offer to the redevelopment board um, the two dates of uh, Monday, September 21st, or Thursday the 24th. Does that work for people? Yes, okay. So Mr. that would be Carl. my vote. Mr. Carl, for a second. 
Second. Yeah. Mr. DeCourt, do those dates work for you? That's fine. Mr. Diggins? Works for me. Thank you. And Mr. Town Manager, those dates work? Yep. All right. And those work for me as well. So on a motion by Ms. Mahan, second by Mr. Carl, Attorney Fahim. Um, Ms. Mahan. Yes. Mr. Diggins. I'm yes. Sorry, Mr. Diggins. <laughs> Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Curro. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Sorry, folks. It's unanimous vote. We're interchangeable. <laughs> it does feel late. Right. right. So that brings us to the next item. So this shouldn't take long. I had talked about this briefly at the last meeting where I think, you know, for so we've been going through this pandemic for so many months now. And initially I feel like we did a great job of acknowledging the people that have really pushed us through this. Um, and I think it, you know, I've seen this in a few locations. I think it's time for us with the board's approval to put up some sort of a, a banner commemorating our thanks for all the first responders, the police and fire and the healthcare workers, our town staff have, that have been amazing during the, this process and all our essential workers. My thought was to put it, to have it in a prominent location in Whittemore Park where, you know, it's a busy intersection on Mass Ave where we can display it for a reasonable period of time. Um, sort of at the discretion of, you know, the town staff that are putting it in for the exact location that would work. Um, but I would just look to the boards to see if they would support that, um, thoughts on to, as to what it should say, and if you work, if the location works. So I will go to Mr. Diggins first. Yeah, I mean, that location sounds fine to me. I mean, certainly the, the the desire to thank all the entities that you just delineated, I, mean, I fully support, especially the essential workers. I mean, so, so I'm in favor of it. Um, I have me, I accept that location. I haven't really thought about locations, you know, uh, but that's fine with me. Thank you. Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I support that as well. I think that's a good location. And I think you had had proposed language in the, Agenda item. I think. I think was that what you were going to propose for the the, the language? Yeah, that's what I had thought would be the, um, the for at least for discussion. And then if there was any additions to that, um, I would. You know, one thing group that's not in there that I think should be is certainly you know our town staff that have been working diligently, like our health department and whatnot. But um, certainly along the lines of what we have listed here. Yeah, no, I should put that, I'll, I'll second the, uh, the, the motion. Yeah, and Mr. Carl? Yeah, I very much support it. And, and I think it's very timely because amongst those essential workers are all the um, teachers and, and, um, and the staff who are supporting the reopening of schools uh, a month from now. So um, I think I, yeah very much so. And I, I think that it should stay up at least through the end of the Commonwealth state of emergency. So, yeah. All right, and Ms. Mahan? Um, definitely in agreement. Um, I, I think you pretty much captured it with what you have there. Um, if you want to add also in town employees, it's just um, what size is the banner? That's a lot of words. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess I kind of lumped um, you know, our town employees, Board of Health, and others under essential workers. Um, but um, I'll leave it to you. And yeah, I think that's in terms of what, okay. In terms of what the banner should look like, um, can't draw. I can do tic tac toe squares. That's it. But um, I, I guess I would anticipate, and I would leave it to the chair working with the town manager whether uh, the town seal is on there or something else. I know. Um, through the planning department, they put out different um, sort of lawn signs and had different graphics on it. But um, I would anticipate that that wording that you've uh, come up with, as well as at least one piece of 
graphic, if not two. But again, I'll leave that to you, Mr. Hurd and Mr. Chapman. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think I can work with the town manager for the exact wording and logistically to get the banner ordered and and uh, erected. And uh, Mr. Chaplin, do you have anything to add or I think we're, we're in a good no, place? No, no, I think we can, uh, with the board's approval, we can figure out the right way to fabricate it and place it on the site. Um, and yeah, I, th I think we, we can make it work. All right, and so a motion by Mr. Diggins, seconded by Mr. DeCourcy, Attorney Heim. Ms. Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Kiro. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. All right, so that takes us to item number 19 on the agenda, discussion of future select board meetings. So we have one set for August 31st. So if we look at the calendar, no, I guess. We have a Monday left in um, December because we can't do the 28th. We already took the 20th. So. So would the 14th work for the next select board meeting? Yes. And what I'm thinking is our August 31st meeting is our first meeting in September. Yeah, essentially, yeah. And then and our September 14th is our second meeting in September. Is that all? Yep. So that's how I, I viewed it. Is it, you know, we put that since we generally again don't have two meetings in August, August 31st is our first September cycle meeting. 14th would be our second. So if we look to October, so we would be due on October. Fifth, I, if everyone just can give me a yes, no. Yes. All right. Then so fifth to nineteenth. That work? Yes. Sorry, I'm, I'm clicking back and forth from my calendar so I don't get all the thumbs up. No problem, so I'll just say yes. Yep, and if you remind me, traditionally at this point, do we go into December for meetings or are we gonna, do you wanna wait? Well, well I mean, we do still we have November. Off on November until we know what we're doing with the town meeting warrant? Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we, we are now okay, Mr. Chair. If I could just um, ask that um, after the meeting at Lexington, and as things come back, and you have a conversation with the town manager, if, if we can at the August thirty first meeting, if it's an appropriate time to set the November December ones, yep. otherwise we'll do it. So when as soon as you can get that on the better, but I understand it may not happen until our second meeting in September. Thank you. Okay. All right. Yeah, and I'm also thinking that we might have a, more meetings in October, and if we're going to do more hearings, so so it's fair. All right. So, in do, Attorney Heim, do we need a motion to set these the meetings? Yeah, I would just um, uh, put out a motion to set forth the basic meetings you've outlined. Yeah. All right, and I uh, will entertain a meeting to set. For future September and October meetings as discussed by Mr. DeCourcy. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. So I move that we have August 31st, September 14th, October 5th, and October 19th as our next four regularly scheduled meetings. And Ms. Mahan? Second. Okay. All right, on a motion by Mr. DeCourcy, seconded by Ms. Mahan, Attorney Heim. <clears throat> Ms. Mahan? Yes. Yeah. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Carroll? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Janice yeah, Fogel? All right, and that takes us to correspondence received. We have a letter from Chris Loretti, 56 Adams Street, regarding 339 Massachusetts Avenue. We have a letter from Robert Tosi, 14 Inverness Road, requesting review for pedestrian safety measures at 
crosswalk at Mystic and Chestnut Street. We have a letter from Rita B. Jones via email requesting pedestrian and safe, safety improvements at the crosswalk at Mystic and Chestnut Street. A letter from Richard Turner via email requesting pedestrian light at crosswalk at Mystic and Chestnut Streets. And a letter from Rachel Stark, Randolph Street, regarding liberty and justice for all travelers. Um, do we want to refer 21 to 23 to TAC, Mr. Town Manager? Yes, I think, I think that would be appropriate. Move receipt of 20 and 24. Um, so with, with that. So moved. And Mr. Diggins, did you have a comment? Yes, I mean, which, which number was um, Stark's, uh, Ms. Stark's letter? Number 24. Hey, Ken, I'd like to re request that get sent to TAC also. Okay. Yeah, because it, it involves me and, um, uh, the, the, um, the push buttons for the walk signals. And she sent me some, some studies, I mean, um, in addition to that, that they could be good for TAC to hear, especially in a public setting. Okay. Ms. Ms. Chaplain, does that work to send that to TAG or is that something you'd rather send to Mr. Amstutz? You know, I I think I would rather send it to Mr. Amstutz. I don't want to uh, frustrate Mr. Diggins' goal in, in having TAC look at it. It's, you know, sort of the global uh, programming of traffic signals would seem to be something that lives more with planning and engineering than with tech. But uh, if Mr. Diggins wants there to be a public discussion about it, um, I could see it occurring at TAC or maybe even the Sustainable Transportation Committee as it looks uh, at the future of how we think about transportation policy in the community. So I, um, so I, I that was not much of an answer, I guess. But I, uh, no, no, no. Again, I, I don't want I don't want to frustrate Mr. Diggins' uh, attempts. It's 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 fine. It's fine. I mean, uh, I I hear where you're coming from, and uh, and and so I think one way or another we can we can get this more of a public airing. I, I think the sustainable transportation plan to connect Arlington is a good place to have it. I mean, and so so um, I'm I'm gonna go with with um, what you prefer to do, and, and, and we'll work with that. Okay, thank you. All right. That's good. Mr. Carl, just to confirm your motion as amended. Yes, I, I confirm that. Yep. And do we have a second? Second. Second by me. All right. So we have a motion by Mr. Carl, second by Mr. DeCourcy. Attorney Hein? Ms. Vaughn? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Kiro? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Unanimous vote. All right. And with that, I will take a motion to adjourn. Mr. Oh, Mr. Hurd? Yep. Mr. Chair, could I just ask just uh, sort of housekeeping procedural? Um, could my vote when uh, my audio went out, I believe it's the only four to all vote. I believe it was agenda item 10. For yep. the record reflect, I also vote in favor of that. Okay, thank you. Yes. Um, you. Can I make a motion to adjourn? Yes. And second. second by Mr. All right, motion to adjourn by Ms. Mahan, second by Mr. Carroll. Uh, so the record is reflecting that Ms. Mahan joined in that and the, and the vote uh, on, I believe, the appointment of a gentleman for the Parks and Rec Commission. Um, and a, mo a motion to adjourn, uh, Ms. Mahan. Yes. The Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Curo. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Thank you all. Bye-bye, everybody. Good night. Take care. Bye.